Hello and welcome to Don't Feed the Geeks, presented by the Long Island Comic Guys. Again. The masters of the <laughs> geeky verse. Yeah. A little redo here. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, TC, joined by the Dungeon Master. Woohoo! JJ. I'm here. Bojo. <laughs> Red Stick standing by. And Toy Story. Hello, hello. And we have a special extended family member of the Long Island Comic Guys here with us today, Jeff B. Jeff. Gre- greetings and salutations. Ah, very good. That, <laughs> very that, at formal. least you had a better second uh, second introduction. Yeah, I shouldn't go off book. <laughs> I really shouldn't. <laughs> All right. Well, we have loads to talk about today. Tons of stuff came out of San Diego Comic Con. Uh, we have lots of news all around. We're going to talk about some obscure characters. Our buddy Jeff B is an obscure character kind of expert. That's where we brought him in. Some of the some of the aficionados. You like aficionado? That's yeah. good. Right, we'll go with an what aficionado. Do you call, what do you call us guys who only like Spider Man and the? Uh, we're basic bees. Yes. <laughs> basic bees. <laughs> yeah. Uh, myself and I believe Toy Story for sure. Probably JJ too. We're 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 into the heavy hitters. Yeah. We only we only play the hits. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, but that's uh, good stuff. I think we're going to have a fun episode today. And we're going to start it with uh, our Geek Beat. Yeah. Who's on the Geek Beat today? Is I think it, today it's Bojo. Is it the Bojo? Oh. Bojo. Right, Bojo. Right. Why don't you kick it off? All right. So some news out of San Diego Comic-Con this week. Um, Lots of news. Let's let's start with the TV side of things. And we'll talk about the, the Arrowverse uh, kind of leading towards the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover this year. Um so lots of people were announced as kind of either showing up in the series for the first time or reprising old roles. Um, I hear that Tom Welling is in talks, uh, as well as Linda Carter uh, being in talks to reprise their roles as Superman and Wonder Woman, respectively. That's definitely wow. my, the one I'm most excited for. Well, I hope that happens to see Linda <laughs> Carter as Wonder Woman. Oh, again. I thought you were talking about Tom Welling. Um I don't know. I, I like <laughs> Time Welling at the time. I, I don't know how he's going to translate. <laughs> he actually looks older than Brandon Routh at this point. He does. <laughs> it, it, would, it would be nice to finally actually see him in the Superman costume, assuming that they put him in the Superman costume. I feel like he was always opposed to that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, so Brandon Routh, speaking of Brandon Routh, is supposed to suit up as Kingdom Come Superman. And Brandon Routh was uh, Superman in the uh, – what year was that? 2000 2005 maybe 2005 Superman yeah. Returns I was 10 Superman <laughs> Returns right um, <laughs> be quiet <laughs> <laughs> you were not 10 were you I was he 10. was I am ancient oh my <laughs> gosh <laughs> so uh, Brandon Routh is, is going to apparently appear as the Kingdom Come version of Superman uh, which is going to be pretty pretty kind of cool um, he's also currently on the Legends of Tomorrow as playing uh, Ray Palmer the yeah, Adam yeah that should mm-hmm. be interesting so it'll be it'll be kind of interesting to see how they how they play that up I did love the one thing I would say. I mean, and I don't know how much of this was his fault. I mean, that was just bad writing. Um, he was an awesome Clark Kent. He like really um, found his inner Christopher Reeve, and like I loved his performance as Clark Kent. The Superman was okay. Yeah, I mean, the story was just bad overall. Honestly, I know he's uh, he's on the canceled list. But um, great Lex Luthor by, I guess we won't even say his name. Because <laughs> I, I can't remember it mostly, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Kevin Spacey yeah. is, is, I mean, is kind of a tremendous yeah. actor. Um, so in addition to Welling, Carter, and Ralph, Burt Ward is going to be Robin How in this, I that guess. That's someone oh I do not goodness. want to see in the costume again. <laughs> I, I wonder if he's going to be like a almost like a coordinator sort of thing. Like maybe is he going to play like the, the like Alfred Wayne role? Was like an, when was the last time yeah. he was on TV? Dude, I don't know. Uh, Did he have much of a career after 66? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Not that I can recall. Yeah. He's definitely guested on things. Like he's yeah, been a guest star he, he's on been like a guest CSI or on something. Like, uh, but I don't, I don't know. I think, the last, yeah, I think the last <laughs> time I saw him was be like guest host on Sven Gulli. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is coming out when around December yeah. of this year, December, January? December night, twenty nineteen, uh, January twenty twenty. Apparently, oh, it's a five parter. Yes, uh, I, I assume they're doing all the series, so that's going to be mm. you know. I, I totally have not kept up with this Arrowverse. It's yeah, I, I, yeah, me neither. Ju- I finished. I just finished Flash from last season. It's the only show I'm caught up with. We'll talk about that later. But mm. um, yeah, there's some other characters that, that are going to be returning as well, right? So Elizabeth Tullock is going to return as Lois Lane. Um, I'm going to be 100% honest. I don't know when she first appeared as Lois Lane. Um, I think she was the last um, crossover 
she showed up. I, I don't oh, remember cool. what that one was called. Multiverse, uh, another crisis, I believe. Yes, <laughs> Earth X. Does that sound right? No. Crisis on Earth X. I'm not sure. Don't worry about it. That's fine. <laughs> um, Someone out there knows better than us. <laughs> that is true. Uh, Tom Cavanaugh is going to be playing the role of Pariah, which yet, is a, yet a, another role for him. Huh? Uh, that guy's awesome. He is. I do like. Like him. every year, he gets to kind of reboot and do a different character while everyone else stays the same. Uh, did anyone watch Fringe? No. no. Oh. All right, so in, in Fringe, every single year, it seemed like they almost did like a reboot where there was something crazy that would happen that they would have to <laughs> almost like change things. Um, the f- Spoilers on a, a series that's way old. Uh, after the first season, the main character winds up being stuck in an alternate universe where a, a fake version of her from that universe <laughs> comes back to ours. So the actress, the main actress in the show, winds up getting to play two roles. She plays the main character that we know stuck on this other world, and then she has to play this other role, That's pretending to be the original while still having like. It, I just, it was a great. It's a great show. Um, My mind's blown. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I doubt that. <laughs> um, so uh, in addition to Tom Cavanaugh, we're going to see t- John Cryer uh, reprise his role as Lex Luthor. I guess I, from the I Supergirl s- TV I knew, series. I didn't know that he plays Lex Luthor. I, I knew he did. I hadn't seen any of that. Does anybody here? That makes two of us. T- no, I don't think so, right? <laughs> Is anyone watching no. the Hourverse? I, I, no. No. I was. Not since, like, season four. I was <laughs> caught up up until season four. I've December seen the first two seasons of Arrow of last year, and, and I haven't watched the stuff since then. I, a lot of it's tough to get through. I'm not going to lie. Supergirl, I don't know if it's better when Cryer joined it, but it was the first half of this season was pretty bad. It was tr- hard to watch. Arrow, Arrow very similar. He was in jail for way too long. Oh. It was just like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> it was in jail? <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> possibly a little known fact there was actually a, a treatment of a movie out there called Supermax um, that was set in the DC universe that had Green Arrow as your main viewpoint character like mm, stuck in prison for a crime much. <laughs> I mean yeah. readapted repurposed yeah, probably but like he was he was put in I mean, a maximum security prison nice. for super powered beings I mean let's wrongly be wrongly accused and he had to like kind of survive his way through that let's it, be it actually sounds like something I'd let's be honest the yes. whole time they've been tra- just trying to push him off as their Batman I mean, superpowered yes. beings. Yeah. Yet he has no powers. I, uh, just listen, like man. Arrow? Just he like he arrow? Is, no. He's all no. tech. No. Yeah, so he's in a super, he's super, more, he's more superpower. Arrow, <laughs> yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, it depends on how far back you want to go on DC like I don't. continuity. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not going to talk not, about the not, Medellin. Not, not this show. Yeah. <laughs> not, not this episode. Yeah, That's all good. I'll talk about Green Arrow until the yeah. guys come home. We know you are. What can I say? <laughs> um, so who's this anti-monitor we're seeing here? La Monica Garrett is the anti-monitor. Was I believe he's character? already showed up. He has, right? And I like think I, the other one. I've yeah. seen a lot of pictures of him, promo pictures of him. This is probably something I'm going to tune in for, to be completely honest. Even uh, though I'm gonna yeah, I'm going to catch up. Yeah, I'm going to try and catch up and, and watch. And rumors, John Wesley Shipp's going to show up as a 1990s Flash. He already has. He's <laughs> shown up as, he was, was he the 1990s Flash? He, so he played the. Very briefly, he came as 1990s Flash in the old costume. Oh, which was really cool. Nice. I saw him when he was he was Jay Garrick from like Earth. He two. was also that too. Yeah. Well, they, they've they've previously done. I mean, it wasn't uh, they previously done crossover though? Oh yeah. Wasn't the trickster from the original nineties? Uh, uh, well, oh, so he, so, he was, he so they the worked show. him in as the original trickster. Yes. Right. So there's they do share continuity. Um. No. No. Okay. No. They just that was the only thing that they kind of retconned in okay. to get Mark okay. Hamill and his kid. So the funny part, the girl who was like his girlfriend was also the mother of like the the younger version of the trickster. Oh, really? He didn't pick up. He wasn't. As, <laughs> he wasn't as good as Hamill. In my opinion, uh, but, um. Uh. Black Lightning also uh, rumored to appear. Right. I don't know. I, I'm also way behind on that too. Really good show. I actually yeah, enjoyed actually really Black Lightning a lot. Uh. The villain's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tobias, Tobias Well, I, I'm yeah. uh, unfortunately I didn't do any research on that, so I don't remember what his actual name is. But hmm. it's a it's a good show. Anyone who hasn't watched that yet, definitely one of the, one of the ones worth watching because it's season one, so they're really trying hard. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So we want to talk about like the the real news out of San Diego. Yeah. Comic-Con. Oh, do people want to oh. find out about San Diego Comic Con news? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Where do you want to start? There was something that was happening in a hall, in a hall each, I believe. <laughs> is that does that ring a bell? Is that important? I I maybe. I don't know. I think maybe. Uh, so obviously. Something about phases. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Kitty Pride. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's going by Kate Pride now. <laughs> no, um, obviously the big news coming out of San Diego Comic Con. to like, you. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we're not friends. Um, 
like Marvel announced their entire Phase Four on Saturday night, and like super just, exciting, like oh my broke God. everything. I think I will chime in with the stuff I am most excited for. <laughs> do we do we want to go one by one? I think Starting we I think we have to. Okay, cool. So we're gonna do this in in um, chronological Eight. order when they're re- being released. So this is gonna be bouncing back and forth between the Disney Plus stuff that's gonna be on Disney's new streaming service and the films that are gonna be released in theaters. And I'll be the bully pushing us along when we stay too long. On I love time. it. That's, <laughs> that's fantastic. So Black Widow. Is going to be coming out next May, May first, twenty twenty. Dude, David Harbor. Yes, David Harbor is going to be Red Guardian. (laughs) Yes, I have his first appearance. I'll be posting it soon. (laughs) Avengers forty three, forty four. All you people. So the forty three and forty four, because I think forty four is spoiler alert: the death. David Harbour's probably not making it through this movie. <laughs> I mean, how often do the Marvel villains actually make it through the movie? Not like no. not <laughs> Trevor Slattery. Often. Anyway, uh, so Black Widow is going to be coming out next May. Apparently, it takes place after Civil War, so it takes place kind of in between Civil War and then Infinity War. This oh, is I didn't know that. I don't know for sure. This is what rumors are. This is what people say. Was that not said on the panel? I don't recall. Okay. I didn't watch the panel. I wasn't at the panel. I got a lot of my information secondhand. Some of it just seems like it's speculation. Some of it's not. I it heard sounds that there's like multiple Black Widows. Yes, I do believe Yelena, uh, Yelena Belova. Yes, is, and, uh, is going to be in it. And Rachel Wise, I believe, is also a version of Black Widow. Interesting. Is also a Black Widow. Ah. She's playing a character named Melina. I think she was Iron Maiden in a comic book. Uh, I do have the first appearance. It was Marvel Fanfare number 11, currently on the high end of $4. So, so pick it up now. <laughs> um, so that's going to be the, the first entry. It looks like you had something to say, Bruce. Yeah, you said it's supposed to be taking place after Civil War. Yes, yeah, it's supposed to take place between Civil War and Infinity War. I was hoping it was going to be before everything. Oh, okay. I, I thought I had read that it was supposed to be before. For the Avengers, because I was supposed to know what happened in Budapest. So I believe this is going back to Budapest. And I wouldn't be surprised if we're gotcha. using the framing uh. of the movies already established. And then we're going to have flashbacks to the, bef- the before time. That'd be gotcha. cool. yeah, okay. It was confirmed no Hawkeye, though, right? Oh, come on. I don't know. I think I heard confirm no Hawkeye. My heart hurts a little bit. <laughs> Dude, you're getting an entire... <laughs> Never mind. Wait, we'll wait. We're going to get to that. Um, so once again, that's you said Rachel Weiss is in that. Um, obviously, Scarlett Johansson is mm-hmm. reprising her role as Black so Widow. So the Love David her. Harbor, you were right, Red Guardian. His name is Alexei. Sh- I'm gonna murder this, but Shostakov. Mm-hmm. I think I was actually. That's about close. right. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. So 43 on the higher end, 280. So suckers who didn't buy that at uh, <laughs> Suffolk, <laughs> the Suffolk show we did because I had it up on the wall. And the 44, which is his death, is on the higher end, about 55 bucks. Not nice. Bad, not bad, not bad. So we're doing a little extra to help you collectors out there. Hey. <laughs> ho. Feel, free to, feel free to direct message me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so next up on the docket is going to be the Falcon. Uh, hold on. Oh, sorry. Did were I jump Were you moving ahead? on to another movie? I was. Um, we didn't mention the most important character coming out of this movie. Oh, my God. Taskmaster. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So Andy Jeez. Park is one of the concept artists who does a lot of work for Marvel, uh, and he he took a picture of I guess something that was in the hall. Uh, it was a, a like a bridge scene I think where it's Black Widow fighting Taskmaster. Uh, he's got like a metal mask on. He's got the hood up, and he's holding a shield obviously. And that's a that's a big book. It's been like picking up steam. E- like ever, ever since I was also working at the shop. That one. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> you do. I mean, we're talking like four, f- uh, four or five years ago. That book was picking up steam, and I, I can't imagine that it stopped since. It's just um, no, it's a so one ninety five, I believe, is the cameo. That's ticking up in the ten dollar range, and I'm pretty sure it was pretty low before that, next to nothing. Um, but the one ninety six, I think, the high end on it used to be. About sixty to seventy bucks. I'm seeing high end about two hundred dollars right now. Dang! Wow, yeah. that's the, that's the one where he's on the cover. That's the yeah, green that's cover. the one. It's it's a great cover. If you guys haven't seen it, um, look up Avengers one ninety six. That's volume one. It's yeah. Perez art, right? Um, George Perez. Is it Perez art? It's uh, yes, you're right. George Perez. Good call. Di- written by David Michelini. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, wow. hot book there. Uh, so pick it up. And then Yelena Bobova. She's also a Black Widow. Yelena Belova. 
she first appears. It's in actually humans, split. Right? Yeah. It's in Humans Five from 1999, as well as the Black Widow number one. And the Black Widow number the one. The 1999. From yeah. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's got two different covers. There's one with Natasha on the cover, and then there's a variant with Yelena Belova on it. And I saw that book was like on fire. The v- the Sunday. variant one. Yeah. Uh, was up there. I I didn't see what the price on that was because it was a lot of uh You're up li- and down. The regular cover was about 25. The Inhumans cover. Is I think people are considering that the bigger book is about fifty bucks. I actually think Inhumans number five from nineteen ninety nine. The Inhumans five and the Black Widow one I saw both going around forty bucks the other day. Oh, did you? Like they were uh, both at a pretty good price. Maybe my uh, information on the Black Widow one was stale. Listen, man, it's comic book markets. It's going to be hotter on the weekends. It's going to be a little slower during the week. I think. Thanks. It picks up again. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, listen, man. Uh, It picks up again right around Wednesday when people are in the stores and looking for stuff, and so their interest is renewed. Um, but uh, listen, it, it, it bounces up and down. And when stuff is announced immediately, the prices spike. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They come down a little bit. People forget it for a little while. And then, then another announcement comes out, and everyone's like, oh, my God, yeah, i got to buy yep. that book. <laughs> and then the, the prices spike again. It, it, it's cyclical. It happens. Anyway, are we allowed to move on, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you've talked about the biggest character coming out of the movie, sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, for- I forgot. All right. I'm, I wasn't in my notes. It wasn't in my extensive notes. <laughs> All right. So what's next? So next is Falcon and Winter Soldier. And this one's not mm-hmm. a movie. This one's a series on Disney Plus, And mm-hmm. it's going to be released in the fall. So we're going to have Black Widow in May in the, spr- in the spring. Uh, and then in the fall, we're going to get Falcon and, and the Winter Soldier. And the announcement for this had a really cool little interruption. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard about this or not. But um, David Brühl. I believe is his name, mm-hmm. interrupted with a video um, where he said basically the two of them, like, I'll be seeing you soon, and then puts on the purple, like, ski mask that yeah, Zemo that wears. that was awesome. <laughs> so he's reprising his role from when, uh, from Civil War, um, and I'm, I'm hoping they – not that they did him wrong in Civil War. I just – maybe more true to character. Yeah, I would think – Would be cool. I, I agree. I hope so, too. Do we know which Zemo he is? I don't think there's uh, like an original Zemo. There wasn't a Zemo that was in the original in the first bo- Avenger movie with okay. Captain America. All right, so, so I think he's just he, like he's just because there's Heinrich and Helmet. He's oh, I believe his helmet. His helmet. Okay. Uh, so his first appearance is uh, Captain America, one sixty eight, nineteen seventy three. Really? Of Helmet. Um, ten bucks. Really? Pick it up now. Yeah. So, but uh, obviously, uh, regular Baron Zemo was Avengers 4. Anyone who knows what that is, that's mm. the uh, Silver Age first Do you think appearance. I can get that cheap? Sure can, <laughs> for about $4,000 uh, uh, I also higher end. He's that's his cameo, actually. That's not his first full. Wow. His yeah. first full is um, Avengers 6. Is it 6? Um, that's what my information says. Uh, it's actually coupled it? with Sergeant Fury number 8. Is Both are considered first. Uh. They well, come out on the same. And day. Avengers, th- they must have been released. And Avengers, fifteen is his death. Pardon, pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. I'm thinking of Kang the Conqueror. He's number eight, right? They're both white, whitish covers. Yeah, I know. I know. Number six is is Helmet and um, is pardon me, is Baron Zemo and the uh, Masters of Evil. Probably. I want to say is the first appearance of both, first full appearance. Yeah, the King one I know. Uh, I've seen that one a lot. I yeah, because that one's everyone wants that one right now. I mean, speculating. <laughs> I, I assumed that's how the time stone was gonna was gonna show up, mm. so I was wrong. In that that Captain America issue that introduces uh, the second Baron Zemo, mm-hmm. he goes by the name Phoenix, though, right? In in his first appearance, he's not actually acknowledged to be a member of the the, the Zemo lineage. I, I, I leave leave it to the obscure character. Uh, I'm, expert a, I'm to know clear that. on that. Uh, that's a possibility um, that people will probably have to research later. Look it up, guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we'll ha- we have our research department on that right now. Our intern. Lastly, of course, with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, is, is Falcon is going to be wielding the shield. Yes. So I know that there's been a little bit more heat, not a lot of heat, but a little bit more heat on the all all new Captain America 25 and the, no. Captain America. Captain America 25. 25. Yeah, 2014. That was like volume 77. Yeah, it's um, in the 12 $15 range, probably cool. higher now. Yeah, not looking um, too crazy. If you want Cal- uh, Falcon's actual first appearance, if you haven't gotten it already, it's Captain America 117. That on the high uh, end, raw, of course. So these, these are all raw prices on the higher end. is about 675 700 So in my notes here, I took note of a CGC sale of, of Avengers 43. You want to hear it? Yeah. Okay. Avengers 43 CGC 9.0. Oh, 
the day it was announced, the evening it was announced. Eight hundred dollars. A thousand. Oh my god. <laughs> Mine's se- probably an eight oh. <laughs> I'm sending it to CGC. Nine seventy four plus twenty five shipping and handling. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> That's absurd. It's it's unbelievable. It's un freaking believable. Wow. So guys, this is ha- the power that these movies have. Just keep that in mind. It's crazy. Um so after Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we're gonna go and uh, oh wait, also Winter Soldier. Oh, he is Captain me? America, two thousand five, number six. I see the one that he isn't his cover going as a little bit more. So there's two versions of that I think they're both Steve Epting. Both Steve Epting covers. I think the one with um, uh, Captain America on it is ticking a little bit higher than the Bucky version, which is weird mm-hmm. to me. Really, that that could, wasn't the case a I, few years back. I could be mistaken, but I see that one in like the fifty dollar range raw. So the main the main cover is going for more than uh, yeah, variant. a little okay. bit more, yeah. And then if you want the actual first appearance of Bucky, that's Captain America one from nineteen forty one. I got seven. That's a cheap book. Yeah. Cheap cheap book. <laughs> yeah, two hundred thousand dollars. Damn, that was going for that, the pre-auction value is what nine hundred and fifty k. Yeah, uh, probably. That's what was that? A, what what grade was that? I think it was like a nine. I don't oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's Captain America. That's nineteen forty one. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Bo, bo, bo. Dang is right. It's gonna go over a million. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The next million dollar book. So, so what's after that? Eternals. Yes, Eternals is also going to be that same fall, uh, November sixth, twenty twenty. You're going to have the Eternals. That's a film, though, right? That is a film. Mm-hmm. Um, who's in that? We've got Angelina Jolie, Selma Hayek, Richard Madden from Game of Thrones. He played Rob Stark. Rob Stark. Yeah. Uh, I'm Those are the only people that I knew. Oh, the guy I watched Silicon Valley. I don't know what his name is. Oh, Kumail. Oh, uh, Dinesh. Yeah, Ganesh. Ma- Dinesh. Dinesh. Oh. Sorry. What the heck I can't pronounce his name. name. It's Camille Nanjiani. I think so. <laughs> he was apparently on a, so on an interview with him on Ellen, and he was talking about having to work out and how it's like the most miserable experience <laughs> of his life. <laughs> I, I would love to actually see that. <laughs> he's like, oh, wait. Because the guy who's playing, like I saw a version, he's a pretty big dude. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, he's going to be a different interpretation, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. So uh, that book, uh, what's that? Eternals number one? Eternals number one, man. Mm. Uh, Jack Kirby was obs- was kind About of a, he was obsessed with this book called uh, Chariot of the Gods. Um, this is something he read before he wound up doing the Fourth World at DC, and then Eternals came out when he returned to Marvel after doing his Fourth World books at DC, um, which is just like this this interesting I guess blend or this interesting idea that the gods had the the gods that we see were actually like alien beings. So like a lot of that stuff is is prevalent in Fourth World in the New Gods and in the Eternals. Um, the Eternals are like a group of characters who are left behind by the Celestials. Yeah. Is this right? Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Because I saw some um, promo art where you see like the Celestials um, in the background yeah. for uh, for this. I, I did we specify in Falcon and Winter Soldier that it, everyone is returning for that? Oh yeah, I mean, I, we didn't say it. But. Also, Emily Van Camp is going to be on there as oh, uh, Sharon cool. Carter as well. Good for her. I didn't put her information down in the books. You'll, She's have, to, a you'll have to look that up on your own. Tales of Suspense 75, I believe. Is it? All I'm right. almost positive. I think it's the first appearance of uh, Batrock the Leaper as well. It is. That I do know. So I, I'm pretty uh-huh. sure it's Tales of Suspense 75, and I think uh, Batrock's first cover appearance is the following issue in 76. Uh, why I know this, I just <laughs> happen to really love ridiculous. <laughs> we're going to talk about this later. Yeah. Ridiculous comic characters, and Batrock the Leaper is like the best. Oh, you have you can't even say Batrock the Leaper. It's Batrock the Leaper. The Leaper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's fantastic. But yes, I know that random information yeah. for you. That's and cool. I know that book is already kind of picked up and I think cooled off a little bit because th- Agent 13 I didn't show up and stuff. I maybe in like the $75 range. I wonder if Batrock's going to show up again in, in their show. Anything's possible. Anything is possible. Yeah. George St. Pierre's fighting again. Oh, that was, though, that's so. who it was, right? Oh, it was George yeah. St. Pierre. Yeah. I was like, I remember it was somebody, uh, a fighter. I can remember who yeah. it was, though. You would know that. Uh, <laughs> a man the, of many interests. The, the one sport you know. <laughs> <laughs> so returning to the Eternals, all right, uh, a lot of those characters have different issue of like, first appearances, all within that run. And it's a relatively short series to collect. I want to say 15, 18 issues. Mm. I don't actually know. My time in the, the comic store, I, I just remember Eternals as being like, Bruce this and is Jim are buying all the books we're talking about. Uh, they probably <laughs> <are>. <laughs> um, excuse me, DM and JJ. Uh, <laughs> uh, I remember the Eternals being a series that like just didn't move. 
And we're talking like I remember that too. Like ten years ago, five Probably years honest, ago, I'm like still it not didn't buy move. One. It just didn't move. Like we'd have beautiful near mint copies of Eternals number one, and be like, we'd be struggling to get twenty twenty five bucks for you it. You know what? It's stuff like that. Sometimes you just have to sit on it. Uh, yeah. I know it's hard in a business, but it's just like something's eventually going to happen. With the, when you, I, I feel like some of the pro- like that, I would have never saw coming. I'll be honest with you, the oh. the Eternals. But there's some properties where like you just sit on it. Like I've been holding on to that Taskmaster book. I was like. This is going to pop. <laughs> I was like, Taskmaster is too cool a character that everyone likes. He's a great character. Yeah. So uh, that Eternals 1 ungraded that we were struggling to get 20 bucks for back in the day, we were looking at like 100, 150 bucks for that now. Yeah, so wow. uh, in almost in, in the 200 range. So wow. yeah. talking about ungraded, let's talk about graded for a quick sec. 9.6 CGC sold the next day after the announcement, 525. Are you never, kidding me? No interest. A nine, yeah. You said 9.6? Nine, 9.6 six? Nine, six for 5.25. Those were all that's over crazy. the store. Yeah. I know. And like oh it's it's God. it's a book that's a little bit later in, in the in years, so like more decent shaped copies of those books exist. Right? And we're talking like a Marvel number one Kirby return, right? So they definitely overprinted that book. Mm. Did they? I don't actually know. Probably. I'm just I'm making assumptions here. I mean, there's a lot out there right now. I see yeah. every, everyone pretty much has one. Yeah. Um, I think there's like I, I was looking briefly I don't know who the first appearances are but I saw 2, 3, 5, and 12 all had like mm-hmm. first appearances of people who are, are going to be in the movie right that's what and, I'm saying like, and there's they're multiple in like first appearances. 10 to the $80 range yeah. right now I uh, think those can still be scooped up kind of cheapish because yeah you know, aside People from are just going for the number one, yeah. I think, right now. If you, if you pop into a like a garage sale or whatever it is. Oh, yeah. People you know, are, not everyone's going to know you. No yet. one's going to know The Eternals is going to be a movie. The um, Do we know which uh, which one is the first appearance of the character Angelina Jolie is playing? Off the top of my head, I don't. Okay, that's not Dina. Important. What? That's the character, Dina. Do you know the name? The book? The issue. Oh. She's the uh, if she's not no, number one, I think it's five or six. Okay. That's probably the, mo- the one that's in like the 12? $80 range. What's that? How many issues did you say it was? I think it's either 15 or 18. Okay. It's not a very long run. Yeah. yeah. All right, next. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I keep, uh, I keep it on the gun. Most excited for this one after the most recent announcement. Uh, so February 12th, 2021, we're going to have Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Yeah. Huzzah. Finally getting the real Mandarin. None of this, <laughs> none of this gosh darn nonsense. You're not a fan of Ben, ben Kingsley. Oh, I, I love ben, ben Kingsley. I don't love him as fake Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> His name was Trevor Slattery. Okay, yeah. and he was. They got. Ben, he was an actor. They got Ben Kingsley to be the villain, and he was a drunk like football, like ex footballer. It was amazing. I'll be honest with you. Probably one of the best Ben Kingsley appear- um, performances <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> Did you ever watch Gandhi? Uh, um, no. Yeah, see, see. <laughs> I've see. watched some of it. I fell asleep. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, there's no fighting in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a lot of people not eating. Yeah. <laughs> so, TC, what can we? What's the first appearance looking like? Ah, uh, very good question there, young Matthew. Uh, Toy Story. Oh, thank you. Yes, I am young. Uh, <laughs> Special Marvel Edition. Do we know what the number is? Marvel that? Special Edition number 15. 15. I, for some reason, I didn't have that part down. Um, that is the first uh, Shang-Chi, and that's in like the 350 range. Uh, the Tales of Suspense. Why did I not write no- the number down for this one? It's the one I was most... Tales of Suspense. Do we know what the number is? Uh, Ooh, from? first Mandarin? Yeah. I'm sorry, but... I looked this up. I got, back. I got it. I'm seeing this on the high end of 775. I'm sure by I now it. it's, and I'm talking raw. I'm sure it's in the thousand range. It's and this was a book easily. I was, and you know what? The, do you remember the 90s Iron Man cartoon? 50. That yep. really, and it was like one of the few things that, like in that time range that I was really watching before like all the like Spider-Man and the Batman anime series came out. That was like the first thing because it was like 92 or something like that or 93. And I was like, this is awesome. And, like, I love the Mandarin. And, like, this guy, he's such a cool uh, villain. And it's just they came out with Ben Kingsley nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> so Ben Kingsley was the Mandarin, but he wasn't the Mandarin. But the real Mandarin, obviously, was Guy Pierce in that movie. Spoiler alerts, kids. Uh, Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he called himself the Mandarin right before like, when he was on fire. He was on fire right. at that point, right? But it was an organization, so <laughs> one can presume that. Did, I mean, did you say, like James did you say what the number was, by the way? the position. 50. Yeah, 50. it tells us Ooh, spends yeah. 50, yes. Um, I was just going to... And, and it's been confirmed. I, I think they have the actor as well. I forgot what the <laughs> yes, actor's Tony, name was. Yes, Tony Leung, I believe is his name. Tony Leung. Tony Leung. 
Is that is that um Mandarin or is that Shang Chi? No, that's that's Mandarin. Okay, Shang Chi. Do we know who he is? Have they cast him? I, I they did. They definitely was... did. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't do guys. the names. I, I did. I did the comic books. <laughs> Uh, somebody I did the fun part. I think his name is Simu, <laughs> S-I-M-O-U. I think is his last name. S-I-M-U. Simu Liu. He's okay. Canadian. Oh, there you go. Ooh. Hilarious Simu note. Do you think Liu. he's going to yeah. throw some A's in there? <laughs> so, hilarious note about that. They announced the Shang-Chi movie, and he tweeted at Marvel, and he was like, hey, like, are we going to sit down and talk? And then... After like he was cast in the movie, he just responded like to his original to tweet. his own tweet. <laughs> it's just he just writes well expletive, <laughs> literally two words. Amazing. It's fantastic. That's funny. Um, yeah, that's all the notes I I'm have. I'm excited for that. that. I'm excited. I'm I really like to see what this interpretation is. I hope it's <laughs> better. So I mean, they've been playing up this whole Ten Rings thing all the way back to Iron Man number one, two thousand eight. Um, that guy who the the bad guy in that he had like the Ten Rings. Um. Mm-hmm thing i believe he was wearing a ring in that movie too there was a ring he was kind of playing with on yes, his finger was. yes uh in one of yeah. the early scenes well do you do you know what the villain's name in that was by any chance no? could not tell you um but cool kind of cool villain even though we only saw him briefly but he was the uh, captain in the original like star trek from 2009 wasn't he like didn't they have to go rescue him yeah like he, the actor who played that character but before also like chris hemsworth yes, took be- over and he, he dies too kirk's father right <laughs> uh yes yeah <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, okay, we can move on. No, no. <laughs> no, the last note I wanted to make about the Shang-Chi movie. Uh, if they're going with Mandarin, which is what it sounds like with the Ten Rings, it's a really easy fix or a, a good replacement for, for Fu Manchu. Uh, yes. Fu Manchu is a character that Marvel doesn't have the rights to. Um, mm-hmm. but was is he Sony? I don't know. Well, what it is, uh, regardless, like... Shang Chi was related somehow to mm. Fa- Fu Manchu. He's Fu Manchu's son. There we yeah, go. So, so the assumption here is going to be, I'm guessing Shang Chi's dad is going to be the Mandarin. Okay. Hmm. I assume that's how they're going to fix that hole, and then they're going to they're going to fix the, the the previous Mandarin interpretations. Okay. I just hope he lasts more than one. It would be nice. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. One division. Yeah. Yes, WandaVision <laughs> in spring of 2021, uh, starring Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany. Mm-hmm. Uh, details on this are kind of scarce. I think purposely. So I didn't realize until this announcement was made that she's also going to be in the Doctor Strange movie. Yes, which she is. is. Interesting. Yes, so she's she in the series and a film. Yes, uh, and they're very closely cool. related. Uh, WandaVision yes. is in spring 2020, and also that spring on May 7th, you're going to see her in Doctor Strange. And, the, and the from what I read, um, WandaVision is going to roll yes. right into um, Doctor Strange. And what is it? The multiverse? The Doctor Strange. The multiverse, the multiverse, of, the multiverse of, of madness. I'm loving these long titles. It is, it's like it Harry Potter. It's pretty funny, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but obvious first appearances are Scarlet, um, Scarlet X-Men. Witch, and Vision. X Men number four, a ridiculous book, uh, in like the th- upper three thousand range, and the higher end raw. And uh, wait, what? Upper three down, three thousand range. We're talking like high end though, high grade. A higher grade, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. I had a very mid grade copy that I sold at one point, and I was like, wait, 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 <laughs> hang on. <laughs> um, that's probably also in the thousand range, I would say. I hate myself. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then Vision, of course, uh, Avengers fifty seven volume Great one, cover. Uh, about in the yes. up in the high range, about seven hundred. I sold a six zero signed by Paul Bettany not too long ago. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, what I read out of this is we're gonna see the adult Monica Rambeau. We saw her as a kid in uh, the Captain Marvel movie. Anyone who yep, hasn't seen, right. she was one of my favorite characters actually to come out of that movie. And we're going to see her as her adult version. I forgot, unfortunately, who's playing her, but they already have the actress cast. I saw her photo on the... Uh, Tanaya, I believe. Do not know names. It's the first terrible. Name. I'm sorry. Uh, her first appearance as Monica Rambeau is in Amazing Spider-Man Annual 16. Mm. And that's getting already up to the $50 range in the higher um, condition range. Not bad, not bad. I actually yeah. I know the cover to I, look at it. I, I didn't know. I the of number. course it's have that because cover. it's part yeah. of my Spider Man run. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> so not looking to move it. <laughs> so cool note about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Skipping over WandaVision just for a quick sec. It's I mean it's I think we don't know much about it, so it's we can just roll right into the Doctor only Strange. rumor I heard is that it's somehow set in like the fifties. If you look at the title, it's got a very kind of fifties, sixties esque kind of vibe. Y- you, like you it does, you're it. right. You yeah. want my opinion? I think it's like in her head. Possibly. Ooh. Or she's doing some type of, uh, what did she do with the No More Mutants thing or that world she was living in? Uh, House of M. Yeah. I wonder. 
We'll find out in spring of 2021. Sure will. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, the, the Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is going to be the first Marvel horror. Yes. I'm so very excited I also about heard, that. Yes. I also when heard it's going to be PG-13, though. Uh, it's it's going to be, be legit horror Like th- th- It's, it's supposed to be more horror. Fantastic. The, yes. most yeah. Ex- yeah. the most exciting the thing about way. this is the title. Yeah, the yeah. fact that they're <laughs> the title is so cool. The fact that they're actually opening up a multiverse. Well, yeah, it's cool, but then it implies the multiverse. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's awesome. That's the thing that's most exciting about um, that part of it. And when I heard that, I was like, "All right, cool." And I was like, "Wait, multiverse?" Like, because I kind of got a little um, disappointed by Spider-Man. the Spider-Man yeah, thing. So. I was, just I was like, totally still expecting have that. not seen it, but right. I already made the assumption. You've seen the Sorry. commercials. I saw the commercials. Yeah. It's it's got Mysterio in it. You know I didn't Mysterio think, is. you know, it's fine. It's all good. I figured yeah. things. So I think Mordo is supposed to be the big bad in this, though, right? I would assume the way that they left off, yeah. that Mordo would be the big bad. Actually, no. I think he might be a contributing factor. I think Nightmare is supposed to be the, the villain. Oh. Mm, I'm not familiar with him. Uh, Ghost Rider villain. Like one of the Marvel Supernatural villains. Okay. Uh, I don't know his first appearance off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, I don't have that one. Bronze right now. Age horror is not my strong suit. I know Mordo <laughs> the Strange Tales one eleven, and that's pretty big book. And like again, nine hundred dollar range in the higher end. Raw one eleven or one ten. Uh, one eleven. Doctor Strange. Well, he might have had cameo in one ten. His first appearance is pegged as one. We're talking about Mordo. Yeah. Okay. Doctor Strange is uh, Strange, ta- Strange, Strange Tales one ten. Yeah. yeah. Easy peasy. That's that book's a that's a ten thousand dollar book. In the Easily. High end. Easily. Great book. Mm-hmm. Easily. Um, Multiverse of Madness. Madness is something that is attributed to Wanda Maximoff, especially when, since you brought up House of M. Mm. I wonder if... A little bit of a tie-in. Yeah. I wonder if one thing leads to another, like, uh, legitimately. They they say that for sure. Oh. They say WandaVision's going to lead right into um, Doctor Strange. Cool. Uh, following Doctor Strange, Loki with the worst looking title card that yeah, I have ever seen. I really didn't like <laughs> that. I didn't think it was terrible. It's, it's not the worst one I've ever seen. Uh, what's, uh, what's the worst? Uh, probably the Fantastic Four reboot recently made. Fantastic, <laughs> Fantastic Four stick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, that, yeah, Loki's going to be uh, in spring of 2021. Uh, obviously, Tom Hiddleston's going to be in it. Uh, aside from the fact that we know that Loki is bouncing around the multiverse following... Uh, not multiverse, pardon me. Bouncing around, I guess... Time, time space with the Tesseract after a- Avengers Endgame. I believe that's going to follow up so, on that. So what I did hear was it was going to be still that villainous Loki. He mm-hmm. hasn't had like he hasn't gone through that whole Thor Ragnarok um, experience. He hasn't had like the death of H- Hela experience yet. Um, but yeah. from what I hear, it's going to be sort of a redeeming story. So I think he's going to start off maybe villainous and then that'd be cool. Kind of be like maybe a little anti-heroish towards the end. The, how good is this? They get to take a character that they've already redeemed and redeem him again. <laughs> that's the Disney magic. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, what if is come is following that? Is that what we're hearing? Summer of twenty twenty one. That's yes. animated. Yes, it's the only one that we're yeah. hearing so far. That's an animated one out of the Marvel yeah, stuff. But right? any characters in it, it's going to be the. Same actor. It's the voice. Themselves. Yeah, I yeah. heard Samuel Jack. I heard almost everyone. That's uh, awesome. from the movies. I know for sure Samuel Jackson was one. I think Scarlett Johansson sure, was Daniel one. Do it too. Um, I didn't see his name specifically. I bet he's got it. Hemsworth. I saw um, Elizabeth Olsen. I saw. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited for that. That's gonna be cool. I'm, I mean, I'm into animated stuff. I know you're not super crazy about them. I, I mean, w- it's hard when like, I liked it before that they gave me like this, like you know, three course meal. Of live action greatness, true, yeah. and then when you go back and like, well, instead of watching this, DC's like, do you want to watch a cool animated movie we made? I was like, no, I just saw Avengers Endgame. I don't want to <laughs> see. <laughs> I don't want to see your animated version of this. Very good point. <laughs> so, uh, Jeffrey Wright is going to be the voice of the Watcher in What If, if I recall correctly. Um, he's in Westworld currently. He was yes, Felix he's Leiter cool. in the the. In the Bonds. The Bonds, the recent Bond movies. He's also, oh, you know what? He has a link to Samuel Jackson because he played Peoples in Shaft. Really? He had the greatest, um, like, Spanish. I don't even think he's Spanish, but he had this, like, <laughs> fake Spanish accent. It was hilarious. <laughs> anything Actually, I, I do think he's Hispanic. Anything I've seen Jeffrey write in, he's been terrific. Yeah, he's, he's very good. Um, so he's going to be the, the narrator as the watcher in, in that show. And then That's I, cool. I, I wonder what the animation style is going to look like. Like, what are they going for? Is this going to be hand-drawn animation? Are we getting Archer-style animation? Are we getting, you know, like, basically, Archer animation is, like, ramped up how it should have ended? Well, I, I know what you mean. 
What if it's <laughs> what if it's a multi- multiverse? Isn't it? I mean, presume the these are these are storylines that are taking place in a di- so it could be different animations. Are they are they going to be stealing from? I didn't even think of that. I, I was going to say I, I actually was thinking the same thing as you. That's that would be cool. That we might see something different, a different style for each one. No, not even that. Just we're getting WandaVision. We're getting Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and Loki, and all those potentially leading are to, are leading to wow. like a multiverse where we get all these different characters in different what if situations like alternate universes i was wondering if they were going to follow like the what if storyline i, I mean don't possibly because there's a there's a series there was a series of books right i know there's there's a, from, yeah. from there's what i understand they're not one of the first books i ever had was what if uh, all the hulk had killed wolverine one of the first ones i had is what if cable had killed all i think the it's X-Men. what if 50 it's like wolf uh, what if volume 244 or 45 mm. is yeah. a two-parter i have i have the what if jane foster you have that you have yeah. that book nice was g- thor People are interested in that right now. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about that <laughs> yeah. a bit. We're jumping yeah. ahead, but we're going to come back to yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next. Uh, next, you, next one is uh, Jeff's going to his least favorite uh, character. Uh, so in <laughs> fall of 2021. Sarcasm. We're, that is, uh, I'm being facetious. Uh, Hawkeye is going to be headlining. It's got the Matt Fraction Dave Aha yeah. logo. Yep. yep. Uh, and I saw it, a bit. He's training his daughter. That is not his daughter. It's not his daughter. Oh, it's not? not? Daughter, no. I thought it was his eldest daughter. No, it was that's Kate Bishop. Kate Bishop is she assumed the mantle of Hawkeye when he was presumed to be dead. Um, and it was immediately was after. Of, yeah. It was immediately after um, Avengers Disassembled. Yeah. So Avengers Disassembled came out in. Oh man, how long ago was that? Two thousand two. I think a little later. Two thousand three. I, I think it was. I think New Avengers started in two thousand three, so it's right around that right, time. Right. Uh, Bendis came on the title. Uh, it had to be like two thousand three. Yeah. Because uh, oh, there was the Chuck Austin okay. run, and there was the Jeff Johns run, and the Chuck Austin run. That was that was going when I first started reading comics. Uh, yeah. Getting off track here. <laughs> 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 first issue Young Avengers, so, so following Avengers Disassembled. Young Avengers number one. Yes. yes. That's her first appearance. Uh, Alan Heinberg wrote it. $55 range right now. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. So That's on the ways. higher end. I'm sure it's even more than that I with grew, the recent yeah. news. Six is her first time in a costume. <laughs> I don't even know. Fif- 15 to 20. <laughs> and then her series, the Matt Fraction one, kicked off in 2012, Hawkeye number one. And that book's going up in the twenty dollars range. That wow. run was extremely hot for yeah, a while. It was, yeah, yeah. It I was, think that book was already high. I think twenty wasn't that much of a of a uptick on it. When the series was out, the series was extremely hot, and it only ran for twenty two issues. I think after it completed, you give it about a year, the prices come down. Uh, I think you're just going to see that ba- uptick back up now that you've seen the logo being the same thing mm-hmm. and the story essentially being the same. It's it's Clint who has a hearing problem apparently uh, in in the TV series training the next generation of of non powered. Did that happen in the movie? Uh, no. In the movie or the book? No, I'm saying did they did the, they like the hearing loss? No, no. no. Okay. I assume that's going to be something that they're going to touch on with the early half of the series. Apparently, he's going to touch on his time as Ronan. And then the second half of the series, I believe, is him training Kate. Did the last issue of that series take a really long time to come out? Yes. Yeah, there it was late. Delays. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that is going to be in the, the fall of 2021. Obviously, Jen- Jeremy Renner's in it. I don't know if Kate Bishop's been cast yet. That I don't know either. Uh, and I, I don't know who the villains would be. I'm if, if you've ever read the Matt Fraction run with Dave Aha on art, I'm really really hoping that somehow like the the russian tracksuit mafia is in oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like an easy enough uh, oh. in the cast <laughs> they're so funny that they just say like bro uh, bro what are you what doing bro bro <laughs> <laughs> so good so good um and of course coming back to what if what if number 10 the final entry in phase four is thor love and thunder it's with well, my sweet as 80s we, as we yes. know hair metal now. rock opera logo <laughs> <laughs> so excited. <laughs> November yeah. 5th, 2021. Yes. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not sure that's going to end phase four. So uh, from what I've heard with interviews with Kevin Feige, 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 Feige. I never know how to, I read his name all the time. I never I, know how to I say looked it. it up. Feige. It's Feige. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, Froggy. <laughs> Froggy. No, no, no. Throg is not in this. Uh, we, you maybe, don't know. Maybe. We don't know. Uh no, he says that um, the following movie that we're going to talk about wasn't part of Phase 4. But if they're announcing it, I don't think it's going to be part of Phase 4. And I think he announced that all of this was Phase 4. He okay. said, I don't when it was done, he looked up and he said, this is Phase 4. Yes. Okay. So take, I think take anything else is going to be Phase 5. And I guess they're building towards a Phase 6, which is going to be the culmination of stuff. I don't – I don't. this like section yeah. of, of movies, I don't, I don't yeah. really know. Um, yeah. Natalie Portman is back as Jane mm-hmm. Foster, and she is yep. going to be confirmed as – 
being Thor in this next movie. Yes. yes. The so Goddess of Thunder. So oh, yeah. the, the book that you mentioned, What If Number 10 from 1978, in like the $60 range right now. Yeah. So that's her first appearance out of continuity. Right. So they're the Thor God of Thunder 2014. Number 25 is the cameo. That's the final issue of that series. Yes. I started uh, rereading that Thor series. in continuity. It was the, good. The, the, I read it back when it came out, but I started rereading it the day before San Diego. Really? I, I, yeah, coincidentally. That's funny. That's funny. I read like the the whole God Bomb thing. And I was, the next day I was like, oh, oh Jason Aaron's run. They're doing a movie. Nice. <laughs> 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 yeah, that one's like in the th- high 30s. I probably, it, I can see it getting into like the $4 range. And then also uh, the Thor 2014, which has um, her on the cover. Jane Forster Thor is in is considered the first full continuity right. appearance. That's in like the forty five fifty dollar range right now on the high end. There's also a, a cameo appearance in Hawkeye versus Deadpool number zero. Yes, she's yes. a background character. Somebody was dressed up in Halloween as. Yeah, her. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't think they were. I don't know if that was considered her though. That's why I don't think it was yeah. mentioned. Uh, it's an appearance of the character. Uh, it's not her. I don't yeah. believe. Um, so I don't know how that doesn't seem like it has a lot of heat. No. So Thor got a Thunder twenty five ungraded. I saw it going from like twenty five to forty five bucks. Yeah, that's the the number one, and this was like an eight issue series that rolled into Secret Wars that Hickman was doing. So everything like ca- got canceled mm-hmm. and turned into weird titles for. Yeah, I think s- I dropped off six months, eight <laughs> after months after that. Yeah, um, a lot of people did. The number one was going for like between forty, and I saw as high as fifty five immediately yeah, after the announcement. Not surprised. I remembered I had an extra copy, and I then immediately one. realized that I sold it in September <laughs> <laughs> for ten dollars. Um, and then Hind- Thor hindsight's no- twenty twenty. Oh, it is. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah. Thor number eight uh, is her to be revealed as the goddess of thunder because we didn't know who Thor was for the first seven issues. I of that think everyone yeah. assumed it was her. No, nope. but. They didn't announce. I thought it was going to be Ross Solomon. She was a character that was oh, a, a, right. I know used in the, the You know what? I was, I was buying then, and I remember you keep trying to sell me on that. I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> Listen, I, and, I... And you were still saying it. At one point, it was just like, I saw her in the same book, and I think Thor, <laughs> the other Thor was there. <laughs> uh, that's how they were narrowing down the field of who it was. There was also a, like a rumor it could have uh, been Freya. Freya, sorry. Yeah, Freya. Um, you could have been Valkyrie. Like She was blonde. Yeah. You know, Jane Foster had dark hair. Yeah, Freya um, was the only other person I thought it could be. Yeah. Um, but the the only reason I thought it was her because you hadn't seen her, like right. she was the only one who wasn't showing up at all. Like you saw Freya at some point, but like oh you didn't see them together. But right. she's like, like like because I think um Odin was confronting her. And said, oh, is it you who has the hammer? Are you the one flying around or something like that? <laughs> Odin's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> that Thor number eight though is uh going for around twenty bucks, and that I saw that that what if number ten, talking about graded books one more time, CGC nine point six. The day after the announcement, four seventeen fifty. <laughs> wow! You said seventeen. Four hundred seventeen dollars and oh. fifteen cents. Yeah, I did cents. see that one. Yeah, I thought you said for seventeen fifty. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Though the, the Avengers forty three surprised the heck out of me. Is nine oh one thousand bucks? But like, I mean, these are still pretty big numbers. I think um, another announcement. So Valkyrie is also in this again. Yes. Uh, I heard. Uh, so her appearance is actually Avengers. ED3, but it's not really Valkyrie. It's uh, Enchantress. Oh. Um, and that book's like in the $150 range. I think her, the first time Valkyrie is someone else, I think is a much less um, sought after book. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people consider this the first appearance, even though it's technically not really her. That's the cover with the Lady Liberators? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, Black Widow's with them and stuff yeah, too. Yeah, yep. uh, that was uh, Avenger, yeah, Avengers ED3. Um, but she's also to be announced to be looking for love in this movie, uh-huh. and she's going to be looking for. She's a queen. looking for her queen. Yes. yes. Uh. So I think that's the first an, um, announced character that is officially LGBT. lesbian, bisexual, officially LBQT, LGBT. Yep. LGBTQT. Yeah. Yep. yep. All right. So. Well, I mean, yeah. the, the Eternals has like a multicultural cast. The, the Eternals movie has like a, a crazy large multicultural cast. Oh and yeah, and then we're talking about like you know Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. You're you're seeing a a much more diverse um, Marvel universe going forward. Well, I think oh, yeah. Marvel. I, I think Marvel heard heard all the noise from you know that you know, from the public, and you know it's it's something that people want to see now. So, I mean, you know, and they have the books. Yeah, mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, they have all like the stories are laid out. Yeah. yeah, you know, so it's just it's like okay, let's 
grab some stuff. And yeah. And Not even that. They're just, they're pushing in the international markets. They, they've yeah. they've mm-hmm. got That's like they've too, got yeah. the Midas touch. It's like they can take the most obscure character and just like make their movie, and they they're gonna make millions out of it. Yeah. Damn, they're doing an Eternals movie. <laughs> Eternals. <I know>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then what closes this out from the big news that we heard yeah. from uh, this well, so, whole well, each? So that wraps up Phase Four. Yes. Okay. So this yeah. next one is not Phase Four, but is still sick. Uh, so <laughs> what is it's, it? It's <laughs> not Wesley Snipes, but Mahershala <laughs> Ali is. What about be is he Sticky Fingers? <laughs> <laughs> sticky Fingers. <laughs> He's going to be Blade. Uh, for yeah. a new movie for Marvel Studios. I'm a big fan of him. He, uh, anyone who's, um, he's fantastic. He, uh, the first, my first appearance, um, my first experience with him was House of Cards. He played Remy. Oh yeah. Uh, he was awesome in that. I really yes. liked his character. Uh, and then he's, uh, he of course was Cottonmouth and Luke Cage. Fantastic. The first half great. of the show, he was great. After he died, the show. Yeah, show. He carried that. Yeah. Spoilers. He carried that. Spoilers for a show that apparently doesn't count anymore. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. And you should have watched it. So, no, by the way, he's I a two-time. He's also a two-time Oscar winner, um, both for gr- for Green Book and Moonlight. Yes. Mm-hmm. So two this is a, this row. is a guy who has some deal. you know powerful yeah. uh, acting uh, chops behind him. Listen, I had a friend, Mr. Jimbo Slice, was complaining about uh, not going with the Wesley Snipes again to me, <laughs> and I was like, listen, I was like, the guy's almost sixty. I mean, we don't even know yeah. when this movie's going to come out. I'm sure they're going to be using him for the next ten years. I was like, you can't expect the guy to do it into his 70s. I think they're going to bulk him up just like everyone else because he is on the thinner side. I don't think he needs to bulk up necessarily. I think he does a little bit. A li- <laughs> maybe a little bit, but like, I think that that's a character you don't necessarily need to bulk up. I mean, I think he needs to at least be a similar build to the Wesley Snipes, and he's not there at all. The guy's wearing leather most of the time, so you don't. there's not much exposed. It, that's if they go with that route. Uh, they could totally re- imagine this. Like the green jacket he, he, from the initial. Yo, maybe. Who That's knows? He can go business casual. <laughs> <laughs> Unbu- unbuttoned. Or he can go, <laughs> go brown trench coated. The blade just has to look sharp. Yeah. Uh, oh. don't, don't do that, please. There's a lot of equipment here. We know you like to, we know you like to hit tables. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just did a rim shot. Yeah. Anyway. Oh boy. Uh. <laughs> this is a PG-13 show. So do you feel Rim like shot. What did you think I said? <laughs> <laughs> Rim shots on the drums, man. Anyway. Okay. So are the Netflix shows no longer? I'm going to be honest. I canon? think that they're trying to distance themselves from those Netflix shows. They're moving and consolidating everything to Disney+. Plus, mm-hmm. And I think they have total control. I think Feige has total control all over all that stuff. You have the same actors showing up in the TV shows now. You don't have the stuff that's made for TV. I, I feel like this is throwing the baby out with the bathwater. There's a lot of great actors. There's a lot of great stuff in those series. Listen, they... I think they suffered from bloat, but that's me. It's just a little long. I think they're they're gonna come back to that stuff when they can. Um, there's there's plenty of stuff to do right now. Like there's a whole list of stuff that we're excited about, and like when when the um, what is it the 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 ending agreements are done, ter- the the terms where they can use those characters ends. I'm sure we're gonna see them back. I mean, they're we're, I mean at, at the very least, Daredevil and Luke Cage we're gonna see back again. You, you build a multiverse, you have your out. These guys were just in a different universe, and the quote-unquote event that happened was something else in their universe. If we're presuming Mm -hmm. that that's the direction they're going, then there's your your, your back If they're not caring that they're recasting a character from the Netflix show to a a, feature-length movie. Well, they they did that previously because in Civil War, Mm -hmm. the the actor that that played Mariah was also Mm -hmm. the mother of the child who died in that explosion. Right. Right. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. That's the first time. Yeah. There's been other instances. Um, somebody, the, 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 one of the guys who played the cops in Avengers, was one of the main characters in Agent Carter. Yes, you're right. Oh. Yeah, he was the guy with like the gimpy leg. Yep, I forgot his name. I don't. Uh, gimpy leg. Is I think it's gimpy leg. Say? Yeah, I think it's gimpy. Yeah, leg. Is that Agent <laughs> Four first appearance? So stuff that, that we can <laughs> say. So stuff that they haven't officially announced, but is also coming. Maybe not this phase. Like you said, all this stuff, right? Uh, yes. 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 One hundred percent. This is stuff that is um, Black Panther two, obviously, uh, Captain Marvel two, mm-hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy three, mm-hmm. and they're gonna start that as soon as he's done with uh, Suicide Squad. Yeah, that's what James Gunn tweeted. Yeah, and um, and then he also hinted at Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. So what I'm hearing is there, a- and this is from the article I read. I don't remember um, who printed it. Is we're gonna hear more information at the D twenty three summit from Disney. What is that? It's a kind of like their um, when I'm sorry, but also ne- what? next month. Okay, I think it's kind of like t- Disney specific announcements. Okay. Um, I think this is this was more Marvel. I think it's the whole Disney company, uh, you know, um, you know, products, uh, 
you know, there are other films, animation, um, live action stuff. Mm. All right. We'll see what happens. Can't wait to see what's going on. Yeah. Is Mr. Rogers part of the, that movie they're making? Is that part of the Disney world? It looks fantastic. I'm so excited. <laughs> that, for that does look awesome. I got very Did emotional. Wa- I got a very emotional watching the trailer. Uh, I saw the trailer. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but the scene on the train is what got me. Yeah. Like 100% what got me. Oh. Where it's like everyone starts singing, it's a beautiful day oh, in the neighborhood. Yes, like yeah, yes. I was, I was good all through that, and yeah. I was just like, "That was awesome." Yeah, that was really good. Who's you, cutting onions in here? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, it's it's hard because, uh, I mean, I know I'm sure everyone here, you know, grew up with like the guy. So to have someone else play him, it took me a second to be okay with it. Like that whole opening scene, where it was just like, yeah, but not, it only it, took like ten seconds. It's not so. right. Like it just, it wasn't right, the way he did it. So one of my favorite Tom Hanks movies is Catch Me If You Can. Great movie. And one of my favorite parts about that movie is about 15 minutes into the movie, I forgot Leonardo DiCaprio was Leonardo DiCaprio. Like he just immersed himself in that role and just became his own character, became his own thing. And and like it was fantastic. I don't feel like Tom Hanks fully kind of gave himself to the, not gave himself to the role. He didn't disappear enough. That's my main complaint about the trailer, and, and I haven't seen people saying this a lot, and I guess I'm a jerk for doing this. I, I love, like, Fred Rogers. He's a great guy. I loved his show. Loved the impact. Loved the, the, the presence, the energy the man had yeah. when he was alive, when he was doing, te- like, public television. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't feel like the voice is right, and the, the mannerisms are close and similar, but they, he, doesn't, he doesn't disappear. At least in the trailer. No, I may change right. my it might mind. Come off more and, I yeah, may come change out my mind when, when I, I watch the full movie. Yeah. The first time, uh, by the way, catch me if you can. First time I ever thought Leonardo DiCaprio was an actor. Yes, <laughs> agreed. Before that, if you so I hadn't seen him. That no, was Romeo like what two thousand two thousand one. Later than that, two thousand two two thousand three. One of those two years. So I didn't really see him do anything from Titanic till then. Yep. He did major acting work in between there. Absolutely. Because he transformed into like. A powerhouse actor, in my opinion, that movie. When was he, that Romeo and Juliet movie? Before Titanic. Ninety-five. Yeah, it was before Titanic. Yeah. The only mo- big movie he did after Titanic, uh, I think, was The Beach. The Beach. Uh, Never Ald- saw that. Not Aldous Huxley. Um, Guy Ritchie. I don't remember who directed it. It was it's the writer that I was thinking of. It's the I, same I guy that wrote Twenty Eight Days Later. We don't have to talk. Believe it or not, <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. No, Leo's good. He's but gonna show up too. Yeah. I'm telling you, Leo. There's no way. He's too big a comic fan. He's showing up at some point. Ooh. He hasn't done a lot. He's going to be the human torch. <laughs> 55-year-old human torch. <laughs> so the last thing we're going to talk about with this Hall H stuff, and we've been talking for like mm-hmm. almost an hour about this, um, Fe- Feige also said that they didn't have time to talk about Fantastic Four and X-Men. Yes. So it sounds like they have plans afoot for them. They definitely did, 100%. I maintain that 2022. S- somehow the snap in and out is mutating people. That's my, my thoughts, my my idea, that so we're not going to have mutation happening, like natural evolution. We're going to have mutation happening as my, a result of something that's already happened. My opinion is it's going to be multiverse. Maybe. I think I think Fantastic Four and X-Men are going to come from the same universe. A really bad universe? <laughs> With a, incons- inconsistent continuity? <laughs> <laughs> and like a really good Deadpool? They're going to they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna get away from a cloud of Galactus and he's going to transform... <laughs> Into a large <laughs> computer robot looking guy. Okay. <laughs> I'm probably the only person on this. I didn't. If you're going to say you like that, you are. I didn't mind <laughs> Cloud Galactus no, that's because um, Warren I, I, Ellis did. I don't want to accept this answer. <laughs> Wherever it's going, I, I, it's not going to change my mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shut down. I'm okay with this. <laughs> All right. So Should that's the movies. That's. Well, it's not actually the last of the movies because over this week, like this past weekend, um, the Marvel Endgame MCU. finally beat Avatar yeah. in yeah. the box yeah. office oh, take. Only oh, by so about excited. five hundred thousand dollars. Doesn't matter. Only a half a million. Yeah. I wish I could. Ol- I could eventually one day say, "Huh, only half a million." Comparably, only a million, <laughs> half a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's a that's pretty yeah. big. Until uh, James Cameron re-releases Avatar one when Avatar two comes out. <gasps> He's brilliant. He'd do that. <laughs> of course he would. <laughs> he would. <laughs> hey, listen. Knock the man all you want for, for stuff. He's constantly pushing filmmaking forward. He's constantly listen, pushing he is. special and, effects And honestly, forward. the only reason that that movie reached where it reached was because of how it looked. 
Yeah. Like, did you really go away? Like, oh man, that was a great story. I just, I, I remember the only thing that I said when we left that theater is that I looked pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, what was it about? Don't remember. I saw, <laughs> I saw it multiple times. The story structure was really good. It had a good payoff at the end. You liked all the characters. It was characters a great all had good girly. story arcs. Yes, I will give you that. I will give you that. But all the characters had story arcs. All of them took them from one place and brought them someplace else Jake and changed Sully. them. Right? Yeah, Jake Sully. <laughs> um, I, I, the Jarhead Clan. <laughs> I listen. I liked the movie a lot when it came out, and I definitely saw it like two or three times in theater. <laughs> I I have to agree with you on that. I I didn't I did enjoy it and I thought it had a really good story too but the but like Tess said it's like the uh, the uh, <laughs> that was me <laughs> the the effects was just it was yeah it was it hadn't uh, been done before yeah yeah no it, it really blew me away yeah I, I think it was a they probably took I think they took yeah. two cameras and put them basically side by side and recorded everything so that you already had the two different inputs for each of the eyes mm-hmm. for layering the film so that's how you had that 3D effect I believe. And they had like they developed something really cool where they could actually watch it live, like on a on a on a, a screen while oh, they were filming. Awesome. Anyway, we're getting way into Avatar yeah. right now. Yeah. Let's move on. And no one wants to talk about it. No, no, no. I don't care about that. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we don't have to talk about it anymore now. So let's we we could, we could talk about it again when when Avatar, Avatar two, two comes out. three four and five come out. Yeah. I think I'm going to be on yeah, vacation right. that week. <laughs> So let's talk comic books. Yes. Let's talk comic news coming out of uh, SDCC. Okay. So um, the Eisner Awards, right? Yes. They're Eis- basically the Oscars they of are the, the comic Oscars world. Oscars of the comic world. Uh, they began in 1988, for any of you who don't know. Uh, the long name is Will Eisner Comic Industry Awards. They are the essentially the Oscars for the for the comic industry. They're voted on by a small jury. Um, no, they're, they're chosen by a small jury and then voted on by all the professionals. You can do me a huge favor here. Yes. And as quickly as you can, blow through these. Who is Will Eisner? Will I? Oh my! Who is Will Eisner? Yes. Oh my God. Uh, Will Eisner is the writer, artist, and creator of the Spirit. Um, the Spirit was cre- was created back when everyone was making superheroes, and the story he famously tells is, you know, he was pitching this this new character, the Spirit, who was a detective, um, <coughs> Denny Colt. Um, to the publisher, and he's like, oh, you know, we're looking for guys, you know, who are superheroes, got masks, got capes. He's like, well, he's got, he's got a mask, he's got gloves, <laughs> and the spirit famously does have both of those things, but he also wears like a blue, ha- a blue suit and a fedora. <laughs> uh, Denny Colt is a, a cop, I believe, who's killed or seemingly killed, and then comes back, and he fights crime. Basically, his his instead of a bat cave, he like hangs out in a cemetery, in a mausoleum. That's like his <clears throat> his spot, his place, his hideout, his hangout, whatever it is. Um, and Will Eisner is just like one of the creme de la creme, de la creme of like illustrators. Um, he, the spirit uh, issues, every single one, had like a, a crazy title splash, a splash page. Um, if anyone was reading the, the Flash comics in New 52, uh, Francis Manipole was totally aping this, every mm-hmm. single issue, by incorporating the, the word The Flash, the title The Flash, into the, the backgrounds somehow. Um, Will Eisner was the guy that just did this all the time. Thank um, you. Oh, he okay. also was a teacher uh, at, I believe, SVA. Um, School of Visual Arts. Okay. School of Visual Arts here in New York City. Right. Uh, guy had an incredible career, um, and I think that it's a good name for these awards. Okay. <laughs> um, so anyway, wow. they have – Sound, th- Sounds like you're in love with the guy there. Zach. He's fantastic, man. He's so good. So little, good. Little, little bromance? Don't, don't, That's don't, okay. Don't poke him. <laughs> we need to move on. <laughs> um, so they have lots of categories. It's just like the Oscars, you know, best director, best actor, yada, yada, yada. So we have uh, Tom King won three categories, and he won best short story, best limited series, and best writer. Uh, I did not read the Swamp Thing winter special, but Tom King had a story in there, and he won best short story for that. His limited series was Mr. Miracle, which has been getting rave reviews. Haven't uh, read, but I heard good things. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, and he was he won Best Writer for his work on Batman, Mr. Miracle, Heroes in Crisis, and that Swamp Thing winter special. Mm. I would think that Heroes in Crisis would, you know, disqualify him from the Best Writer. I but haven't, uh, I haven't finished know, that yet. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure that series out. <sighs> so wait, yeah. what happened here with uh, Sean Gordon Murphy? Uh, Sean Gordon Murphy um, was, was 
beaten in this category uh, for his. Oh, I'm surprised about that. It was for I think limited series. Uh, he had that Bat Knight, Batman White Knight. I really enjoyed that series. Yeah. Uh, and Ed Pisker had the X Men Grand Design Second Genesis miniseries. Both of those lost out to Mister Miracle. I uh, uh, um, that's probably the best Batman story I've read in my opinion since Court of Owls. Mm, I would agree. Yeah, I okay. would agree. All right, that, that's that's comforting. Um, for a Batman guy. I would actually say that Batman Elmer Fudd special was pretty good, though. Mm. All right. I'll give you, you that. You 100% think I'm kidding. I am not. It I'll was fantastic. <laughs> All right. What else did people win? Uh, Mitch Gerards, who was the penciler on Heroes in Crisis and Mr. Miracle, won for best uh, penciler I inker. I like him. I don't love him, his art. <laughs> Jeff, you're an art guy. You have an opinion on that? I like his stuff on The Punisher. Mm. I really enjoyed it. Mm. He does the he paces very well. Okay. Um, he doesn't do big action scenes. Um, he's not a clay man. He's not a Jason Fabok. He's not a Jim Lee. He's not any of those guys. He does. So the he quiet charges scene. reasonable prices. <laughs> 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 uh, you said not to poke the bear. And I, po- I poked a different bear. Uh, <laughs> he does. He does story pacing really well, and he he's a, like a master, or he's getting to be a master of like that nine panel grid that mm-hmm. Dave Gibbons did in Watchmen. Uh, Heroes in Crisis had a nine panel grid in a lot of it. Um, so I don't lo- I don't love the nine panel grid. I'll be honest with you. That's uh, how do you how do you like that in the original uh, the early Spidey don't stuff? Don't get me started. <laughs> <with that. laughs> it's it's tough. It's really tough. Um, Those guys packed a lot of story into a, an issue with nine abs- panels. They let me absolutely tell you. Yeah. did because you had to oh get yeah. your money's worth back then. Yeah. Um, I, all right, let's keep moving though. We have we have so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt Wilson won Best Colorist and he does uh, Black Cloud Paper Girls The Wicked and Divine uh, Mighty Thor Runaways nice. um, so he's a he's a big indie and Marvel guy uh, and, and looking through that list of, of books I, I think it's well deserved his Mighty Thor stuff is fantastic coloring uh, R- Russell Botterman uh, Best New Series Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino's Gideon Falls which I love. I started reading that last week it's so good freaking amazing it's so good uh, it's uh, Image, Image Comics uh, it's a horror series the two of them worked together on Green Arrow during the New 52. I think they started around issue 20. No, next, issue 17. Uh, I think their run went to around issue 30. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff. Does that sound right? That I sure. <laughs> okay. <Yep. Let's> go. <laughs> go with that. Doesn't matter. Um, so th- they wound up working together on New 52, uh, Green Arrow, and their partnership working on this series is probably the best thing to come from it. Uh, best cover artist went to Jen Bartel, who does uh, covers for Blackbird at Image and I Submerged at Vault. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I think Joshua, Joshua Middleton I was I think robbed. Josh Middleton was robbed. Uh, yeah. Josh Middleton has been doing covers for uh, alternate covers for Batgirl and Aquaman, and I think and that those outsell. Yeah. I would love to see the sales figures mm-hmm. split those two books. I want to see that cover B sells more than cover A. Right. Um, I actually like Julian Tedesco too. I think his cover, his pencil work on his covers are beautiful. Tedesco stuff is fantastic. I do like Tedesco too, yeah. but I, I mean, compared to middle, what Middleton's done this past year and a half, it's just yeah. been unbelievable. I feel like Middleton does a lot of portraits though, so it, it's really just a lot of faces. And or is no, it, I'm sorry, no, it's that, more okay. than that. Yeah, it's full. You, did you see the cover that he did for Aquaman, the one, the Momoa one under the water? No, that I was unbelievable. That. Really? Okay, unbelievable. He does. A, he does. He's full, done full, bo- full body um, Batgirl stuff too. Really? But, yeah, okay. I mean the okay. portrait one, like that's probably the one that like really you know hit the ground Those running. The that that Batgirl one, but he did ones after that were just that were fantastic really? as okay. well. His stuff is gorgeous. Yeah. If you if you look up some of his Aquaman stuff, like the hand is, is close to you in the in the foreground, and like yeah. it okay. looks like he's popping out. It's just it's fantastic. He's like one of the people where I looked at this and said, "This is a guy who back in the day, his parents would not have let him draw our comic books." Like that's how good he was. Like I feel like drawing comic books now as an artist is like mm. a big deal. Like mm-hmm. back in the day, like well, you're not gonna tell people you draw a comic book. You're gonna paint for some prestigious company or right. do something. You're gonna like change that. your last name, yeah. right? Not, not use Lee. Or go with <laughs> go with Lee, right? <laughs> um, and t- uh, Jen Bartel also beat out Julian Tedesco, who yeah. uh, Jeff just mentioned before. Not to say I don't like Jen Bar- Bartel's work, though. I I, I do like some. I, of it. I looked at her covers. They are striking. The color usage is excellent. It makes everything on the stands stand out. Mm. So in that regard, she is. Does she color her own stuff? I would assume. I uh, yeah. She she works primarily digitally. So I, I, I think would she think so. Her own stuff. Um, and lastly, my, like just personal note, I love this guy. Dustin Wynn won for Best oh. Painter Multimedia Artist for Descender. If you're not reading Ascender, which is currently coming out, get on that. Book's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like I like his work, too. It's different. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, he's got a Batgirl variant coming up in November. Uh, one of the acetate covers. Um, I think I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. Looks good. Uh, <laughs> so let's get on. There was another set of awards, right? I'm going to so, b- briefly touch on so this. So can you just explain what these awards are, too? So Inkpot Awards are uh, awarded by Comic-Con International directly. By the San Diego By the Comic-Con. actual okay. San Diego Comic-Con. And gotcha. they do it at San Diego Comic-Con. And what I think is really cool is it's usually um, they're giving an awards to people in the fields who are working in comics. They're working in comic strips. They're working in animation, science fiction, something related to, to comic books. And, right? I, and I see two familiar names here from uh, the local area, at least. Mm-hmm. Scott Snyder and Billy Tucci. Yeah, Billy Tucci, former guest of Don't Feed the Geeks, won an ink pot. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations officially, Billy. All right, Billy. Yeah, Billy. Woo, we know him. We know <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's names on the list that like I know. Um, the Gene Ha, Jonathan Hickman, Scott Snyder, Billy Tucci, obviously. Uh, Chris Ware is probably not necessarily in like everyone else's. Mm-hmm. Um, like Purview, okay. um, Acme Comic Library, Jimmy Corrigan, Smartest Boy on Earth, or whatever it is. Um, really cool illustrator. Um, weird stuff. I believe you. And then there's a whole <laughs> bunch of other names that like I was completely unfamiliar with. Okay. And I'm How about we do this? Okay. Congratulations to all the winners. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> all right. So what else do we got here? All right. Um, announced at Comic Con, um, the Mister Miracle team, who won for Best Limited Series, is going to be doing a new series with uh, Evan Shaner, Doc Shaner, uh, next year in 2020, starring Adam Strange. Not nice. interested in that character at all. Um, were you interested in Mister Miracle? No. <laughs> you didn't buy Mister Miracle. I didn't. I. That's a lie. <laughs> I, b- I bought. I bought that issue that Dark Side was on because I liked the cover. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the book's gonna sell. Uh, people. D- oh, I'm sure it is. People underestimated Mr. Miracle. Well, it's fine. <laughs> people underestimated Mr. Miracle number one, and that book easily popped at twenty bucks. I'll be honest. He's the reason I stopped watching Krypton. I just didn't like his character, Adam Strange. Right? Yep. He's the, the, the character, character in Krypton. On Krypton. I was just like, oh, I'm good. There were no announcements from from SCCC about Krypton, huh? I think it started already. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh. It's it's been going. I think it's kind of like a summertime thing. I don't actually have broadcast TV or cable TV. I just watch everything on the internets yeah, me okay. too. <laughs> anyway um i think the most because your parents still pay for the internet no man i have my i pay my own bills <laughs> <laughs> most of them at least i'm an adult <laughs> <laughs> he says defeatedly <laughs> <laughs> um i think the biggest news coming out of of sdcc at least on the comic side is um all of the x-men titles that are spinning out from hickman's house of x powers of x um, they released all of the, the trade dresses. They announced all the teams. They announced who's working on the books, the characters in the books, all that There's jazz. There's a lot of information here. So I'm going to breeze really quickly through you're it. You're going to breeze through it quickly? I'm gonna I, I don't believe you. Two minutes. So what I, want, what I do want to say about this is I liked what he said about there being too much you know, craziness going on. And it needs to be tightened up. Yeah. And, and th- yet there's honestly, a broader series where they seem like they're, they're pirates. <laughs> 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 I'm not kidding. Okay. Captain Kate Pride, funded by the Hellfire Club and Emma Frost. One, one minute left. <laughs> 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 all right. Really quickly, all of these are launching in October and November. You have X Men by Hickman and, and Lennel Yu. Uh, he's a fantastic artist. The cover is basically every Summers and Gray character, and then Wolverine is there. So maybe he's a Secret Summers. I uh, guarantee you he's going to be on every cover because <laughs> people aren't going to buy it if Wolverine isn't on it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which one's Wolverine in? This like, one? This is the only one I want. I don't see him on the cover of these ones. <laughs> he's also in X-Force. Uh, that's a book by Ben Percy, who's making the jump from DC. Uh, and It's got artwork by Joshua Kassara. That's like their CIA book where they have an intelligence side and a, like a black ops side. Uh, so they've split it with. Um, that sounds interesting. Beast, Jean Grey, Sage, Black Tom Cassidy are like their intelligence Black characters. Tom Black Cassidy, Tom Cassidy, wow. baby. Uh, and then uh, on the, the the Hit Squad side, I guess, or like the, the Black Ops side, you have Wolverine, Kid Omega, Colossus, and Domino. Uh, Marauders is that weird pirates book. That one's by Jerry Duggan and Mateo Lolly. Captain Cape Pride. <laughs> Captain Cape Pride, baby. I think I can get behind that one. It, listen, it's one of those things where it's like so out there, it might be fun. Uh, yeah. So that's Cape Pride, Emma Frost, Storm, Pyro, Bishop, and Iceman. Interesting. No Nightcrawler. I mean, someone who's so closely associated, uh, associated with Swashbuckler. Good, uh, yeah, good, good observation. You know, I don't know where I saw Nightcrawler. Coming to think of it, I don't 
think he's any of the he might he must be an X-Men. They got him keeping him an X-Men. Uh Excalibur is the book you think he'd be in. They're launching yeah. a new Excalibur. It Psylocke's seems like it's a very Captain Britain, right? She is Captain yeah, Britain. I heard that. Uh, recently they switched her body back. So for oh, the longest no time Asian. she's no longer Quanin. Like she's no oh. longer in Quanin's body, she's in her original body. Um so she's gonna be the new Psylocke. She's leading that team. It's got Rogue, Gambit, Jubilee, Richter, and Apocalypse in it. Um, Wait, the apocalypse? The apocalypse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am so lost. What's going on? <laughs> uh, we're going to touch on obscure books and obscure characters. Okay. Fallen Angels is being relaunched. Mm. This one has Quanin starring Quanin. Okay. with X-23 and Cable. And this is, this is not so a I'm, miniseries. I'm this is the first one canceled. Like what's going, <laughs> what's going on with that whole Quanin and Psylocke thing? Yeah. I was like, what the hell are they talking about? Right? <laughs> so, so I'm in like 1993 of X-Men books because I'm reading through all the X-Men books. And I was just like, I'm reading all of these. How am I still lost? <laughs> that's, that's why Hickman's trying to clean it up. Yeah. Oh, and then geez. lastly, uh, launched by Hickman and Ed Brisson. And I think Brisson's going to be the one writing the book. There's a New Mutants title. So you're going to have the original New Wait, Mutants. Wait, which one? Oh, you didn't say this one was going to be the first one to be canceled? No. <laughs> oh, oh, this is going to be the one. No, so this one's not going to be canceled because sure Hickman's going to be the one writing it. At it least initially. No, I, I guarantee it. Um, you guarantee that they'll keep producing a book that people aren't buying? Uh, Hickman's name is big enough on the cover. <laughs> New Mutants I, I, over you, Fallen no, Angels? Not. They'll just fold. They'll fold the Fallen Angels book into somebody else. At listen, some point. Yeah, listen. That that'll they, be X Force. They, they can. They can create. They can cancel both of these. X twenty three is a bigger name in terms of. I, I, there's not enough people that know names of people, mm. um, writers and stuff like that. Very it, true. All these names that I'm seeing: Sunspot, don't care. Wolf Spain, really don't care. Mirage, who? <laughs> uh, Karma, <laughs> what? Magic, Magic, and she's on the cover because she's the only character that anybody knows who it is. It's magic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Cypher's on this and team. Cypher, Cypher. he's going to be the big character, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm going to be honest. Cypher's <laughs> on this team, and you want to tell me how this book's going to be great? So the really funny thing is Sunspot and Wolfsbane were like just killed anymore. off too much. Anyway, all right. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of dead characters are coming back. Um, listen, I think that some of these are going to obviously have some staying power, and some X-Men of these are going to be up, very so. quickly gone. Yeah. Uh, I think Fallen Angels, Marauders are probably going to be first. They just need that block. book that Wolverine's in. Uh, that's going to be X Men and X Force. And then they just need to do a Wolverine book and get rid of the rest of these. Uh, they probably yeah. already have, <laughs> they probably already have a Wolverine book. Don't okay. they? I, I, I don't I don't know that. if it's still ongoing. Really? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I think since his death, he hasn't had his own title. Huh. That's weird. I could be mistaken. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there, Toy Story. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, there's going to be a bunch of acetate covers for DC Comics uh, in November. Uh, they're going to be uh, launched alongside. You can order them alongside the October stuff, the October solicitations, because these are like one of those like you know crazy variant covers that stint that stunt they usually do. So like the 3D covers they did. Yeah, exactly the 3D covers. The, you know, it's a little like it's more plastic. They're going to need more time to produce these things. They're going to need a better idea of what numbers. So are. what is acetate? It's just plastic. Okay. So like what it's going to be? It's, it's going to be harder, be like, right? It's going to be like a hard plastic cover that I think that's clear. So that you have uh, an image on the front, and then you open it up, and there's the similar image underneath, but something big happening underneath it. And if you look online, you can see all the different covers. There's usually, like, you know, uh, the Batgirl one I mentioned before by Dustin Wynn has the new Oracle on mm. the front of it. You open it up, and so, it's got Barbara in a hospital bed. So this is a new uh, gimmick, gotcha. Yes, it's a gimmick cover. Yep. Um, awesome. They look pretty cool. Check them out. I mean, I'm not going to fall into the trap of ordering them all. I don't know if you guys are. Uh, probably I'll probably just get the ones I like the it, cover on. Yep. It ties into the big year of the villains thing that's going on. Okay. Um, I'm I'm way behind, so I, I don't know what's going on. It's it's all good. Lastly, and this is just like Batman fans out there. I'm excited. This is going to be awesome. I'm really excited. Warren Ellis is doing a 12 issue mini series, maxi series with Brian Hitch, and these are the guys that brought you the Authority Ooh, in 1999, yeah. like the original, like 12, the first 12 issues of the Authority. Uh, that book was t- taken over by. Mark Miller and Frank Quitely, like the it, it, honestly twenty six issues, like awesome series. Uh, you can read it all in one shot now and not have to wait months in between issues like I did. Uh, but it's like a cool series. Uh, it seems like it's kind of like psychological horror. Um, Ellis's first DC work was actually a, a two parter in Legends of the Dark Knight back in nineteen ninety six. Issues eighty three and eighty four was called Infected. The artwork was by John McCree. Um, it's cool to see him like. Doing something else, doing something dip, like back for DC. Um, 
the last thing he did was uh, Wildstorm, 24 issues, just kind of reinventing the Wildstorm universe. It was pretty cool. All right, let's get into that next. No, well, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're we're getting into someone's origin story here. Oh, want to talk about our origin stories? Uh, no, not yours. No, I don't want to hear about mine. <laughs> I think we want to hear from Jeff, don't we? I think so. Is that everything from uh, that we have at least here from San Diego? That yeah. was a large news segment. Yeah. Uh, was I am yeah. simultaneously sorry and not sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, l- l- let's be honest. This no, is it's one of the it's biggest news of times stuff. of the year. Uh, yeah. all, all the big announcements come out of San Diego. Uh, SDCC drop was huge. Yeah, I mean, if you guys didn't catch it somewhere else, it's like yeah. we hope you catch it here. Sorry, yeah. before we move on, is there any word on that Snyder series for, from Image that we talked um, about last time? No, all I heard was the other one that the um, one with the wall. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, the, the I thought it was supposed. To, excuse me, for pronounce, but um, yeah, me too. I saw the other one that Snyder was working on with uh, with someone with like um, the map on it. I don't know. There was not, un- no, no. there was one he's doing with Charles Soul. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, I think that's, that's the, the one, one with, the, with, the, with yeah. the wall. Yeah, they they announced the book. What's it called? I don't remember because oh. I didn't really care that much. I thought he did. <laughs> no, I was huh. just telling people because it was Snyder and other people we knew. But I didn't want it myself. I, apparently, the book is selling for uh, – they they gave away copies of it, and it was selling for like 50 bucks on the spot. Undiscovered Country. That's yeah. Okay. I thought it was a Star Trek title. Yeah, it is a, <laughs> it is a Star Trek title. It's Star Trek Six. <laughs> I know. Great. It was one of my favorites, actually. Uh, yeah. Any of the even number ones are, are good up through Nemesis. I like Nemesis one. Breaks the Curse. I'm not going to lie. I do like Or one. Breaks the Streak. What's that? I do like one. I'm in the minority. I, I didn't. I like Generations. Like, so that's an odd <laughs> number one. I, listen, I don't care. I'll, yeah. I'll cop to that. <sighs> All right. Let's get into our guest. Are you still awake? Are you still with us? I'm still here. I'm still kicking. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. So. It's, 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 it's actually really interesting watching I mean, you guys work. I don't even know. If, <laughs> do, do we want to call you our guest? We're going to call you the person who's here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just taking up to see what Polari couldn't make it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff uh, is a guest and our friend. Well, yeah. I'll be honest with you, we didn't know that. It's on uh, the record now. We didn't know that Ozzy was going to be around. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. So Jeff is here. He's a fan of the everything unique, that we are not. The obscure. The uh, the stuff he's a fan of. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff, the, let's the start. little known stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the lesser yeah. known. So let's go into how you got into this okay. game. Maybe how you got into comics as a whole okay. or any yeah. sort of yeah. game. It has to be started. your your origin story. Oh, can do. I'm not gonna make the Spider Man joke because two we people in the last couple <laughs> of episodes. <did> that. <laughs> yes, yes. So. That. Thank you for proving that you're a listener. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also yeah. I we're ju- we're just ha- at this point. We're just having our listeners <laughs> on the show. <laughs> So, so, so you'll get another 10 episodes out of this? Uh, five, yeah, five the, probably. The, the podcast <laughs> will probably come to an end. Well, we got no more guests, no more listeners. Well, yeah, I mean, thank you for having me on the show. I mean, I, starting with, you know, the professional eater and going into <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, so you're our, the, the president of, you're, yeah, part, exactly you're part of the special, uh, five month Monday. I was going to say, you I, are. Yeah. I, I, cl- clearly, you're completing the trifecta. <laughs> with someone who really likes the Agents of Atlas. Yes. So, <laughs> is the Agents of so, yes. so exactly. So our comic appreciation our comic appreciation month had to end with somebody yeah. who reads the stuff you do because we couldn't find anyone else who does. Look, I, will, <laughs> I will win by default. My friend. All right, let's get into your origin okay. before we we go off the rails completely. Uh, um. Yeah. So, um, I started reading comics. Uh, like everyone else when, when I was younger I think my first issue was uh, an issue of JLA which is interesting because I'm not really DC guys so, guy so uh, you know quick caveat the characters that I think are obscure are mostly going to be Marvel and most DC characters are obscure to me because I don't <laughs> really read them um, but I do I do pick them up here and there who's it, who's this guy that dressed up like a bat yeah exactly <laughs> oh my gosh um, um, okay so is that your first experience with like comic book and geek culture there wasn't anything before that no well my first experience was uh, uh actually my uncle kind of got me reading books he had this great collection of like bronze age to like early like late 80s books um those are worth some money now and uh, are they yeah, actually, this past yeah, weekend they are he gave that's true he gave <laughs> me uh, uh his collection recently and they had uh like a secret wars eight in there you had a uh, uh, like the wolverine frank miller miniseries there are a lot of really good books but those were the ones that I read when I, I, I first discovered his collection. I actually poured over, I don't know if anyone remembers the, the Marvel Handbook, which was 
Um, it was like A through D, and then it would give you the origin stories of all of the characters. Oh, that's in interesting. Universe. Yeah, a lot of really great covers on there w- with the whole roster of characters that they had in the books. Um, so I didn't really start reading the books as much as their origins, which is I think is why I like obscure characters more because you would have a page dedicated to like a page dedicated or an entry dedicated to Wolverine, and in the same book you'd have you know a, a uh, an entry dedicated to Zax, who is some kind of, <laughs> you know, electricity creature. But I read them all, and it, it's it's just story. It was just stories to me. So interesting. I, I never really felt the need to differentiate between who the popular characters were and you know who the other characters right. Cause were. so you saw everyone as like a whole, kind of like an equal. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that's really cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah, c- completely removed from the vacuum of you know like continuity and everything. Because I was I was just you know reading. Where they were born, their origins. Their I mean, that kind of explains stuff. like your your appeal to these other characters. Yeah, then. I, I was I was thinking back on it. Now we finally have an answer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys have uh, psychoanalyzed me, and, uh, come up to to why. So, and then when I started reading after that, I, I think he also had some Legion of Superheroes books, which I kind of got into. And we were saying that you know that that is a roster that is composed of you know. So uh, the Legion of Superheroes, that's kind of like the future. Are those the future? Um, DC characters, yeah, DC heroes, yeah, thirty yeah. century, I believe, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, R.J. Brandt starts up a. Uh, Is this uh, Monel? Yeah, well, Monel's my boy. Um, <laughs> you got a, you got a cool uh, commission recently. I did, I yeah. did. Thank you, Chris Batista. <laughs> Assuming you hear this at some point, or I'll mention it to you the next time I see you at a show. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just tell him to uh, to put this on a story. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure to. I'll make sure to. Um, yeah, so the Marvel handbook and then some Legion of Superheroes books and that's kind of that's kind of where it all started for me. And then so where to go from there? Um I d- it's very uh, it's very like you know it's very much the trope of you keep reading when you're in middle school. Um I was never really into the X-Men, but I was reading a lot of Marvel, a lot of Cap, never really got into Spidey, but I mean whatever the other books were. So who are these obscure characters? How did Guido get into hand here? How strong guy? Hey, don't <laughs> you dare not strong guy. <laughs> Peter David's X. I think I like the I like obscure characters because um, I tend to associate most runs with the writers. I know a lot of people love the artist, and I don't get me wrong. I have an appreciation for the art, as you know. I, I, I know you do. Yeah. To with my yeah. growing art collection. Um, Danny's not listening to this, right? I oh God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm, I'm I'm certain she's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fairly sure she's not. Especially this episode. <laughs> I get to talk to her about it, like, yeah, at her home. So. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, she doesn't want to dedicate any more time to listening to me. <laughs> Wax philosophical about how, about how great Wolf's Bane is. <laughs> She's um. not. <laughs> it's because you don't know, man. Uh, no, I do, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> you're reading the wrong stuff. Uh, I'm reading all of it. <laughs> None of it is good. <laughs> I said you're reading the wrong stuff. No. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I tend to associate. The book she's in. <laughs> Wolf's Bane? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ignore him. Continue. I'm attempting to. I'm attempting to. <laughs> he tends to loom over us, so it's very hard to. Um, I, I associate a lot of writers and you know their arcs uh, w- with with characters as opposed to, you know, the popular, uh, um, like the the, the, the artists. And the, the popular the, creators. Yeah, the popular. Well, I know you're, you're you're a Peter David guy, right? You're oh, a big I love Peter, Peter David. David. Long I Island love guy. Yeah, we I we've Peter actually David. run into him a few times. He's yeah, a, he's a really nice he's an interesting guy. guy yeah, really nice guy. Um, but he writes his characters so well, and I think that's part of what really pulled me into his stuff. Um, so it, uh, characters of uh, characters that are popular, I believe, tend to – I don't want to say sta- – they're not stagnant, but you know, you've got to abide by a very specific status quo. You, you can't experiment too much, no, right? No, you can't. You can't play around with these characters. You can, like, but they always come back to where yeah. they yeah, exactly. they're always they're, It's always going to revert. So it's never a permanent change. Um, I think it's a lot different when it comes to the characters that are a bit more out there. There's a lot less uproar, like when you yeah. do major changes to Absolutely. kind of obscure characters. I can see that. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, those changes tend to be you know lasting, or they really upend stuff. And 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 I think that's you know, like the first issue of Suicide Squad. I mean, that's a team that's made up of mostly. Would you even say? D level characters. Uh, yeah, we talk about the eighty, the eighty the, series. Yeah, the initial, uh, the initial. Oh, easily D list, D list characters. Yeah. So, dude. was Deadshot? Did Deadshot start on that? Deadshot. Well, he was a Deadshot was Batman in it, but like, 
what books was he appearing in before right. that? Yeah. No one knew Deadshot. Yeah. Right? No one knew Deadshot. Uh, w- Captain Boomerang was like a <laughs> joke. Like, the yeah. guy threw boomerang is at a guy who could run fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, wh- what kind of a threat was this guy? <laughs> oh, no. I can't turn my head really fast and see that this thing's coming back at me. <laughs> so, like, these were, these were, Je- Jeff's absolutely right. Like, D listers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, in those, those, those books, you know, you do have the risk of those characters dying. So, you know, if you, in the first issue alone, uh, you have Mindboggler dies. I believe Mindboggler dies. Who, who's a, I think she's a Firestorm villain. I think. You are looking at me and I haven't read that book. Come on, man. Man. <laughs> Come on brother. Out. Dude, <laughs> we're talking like 10 years. I had a run of that book, sold that book before the book got hot and then tanked again after that movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the new one's coming out. So I, sure. uh, listen, I, I, I sell a lot of things early, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, from your from your constant reaction, like constant reactions to, to the uh, yeah. To the, to the, to All right, the, let, uh, let's get back to your book. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> your, your characters. Sorry, sorry. Uh, but yeah, so I think Suicide Squad is is, is a great example of. Um, and yet, it's a DC one. And Same it's a DC one. So <laughs> it's I'm a DC gonna, one. Yeah, I'm going to contradict myself so yeah. many times during this. Right, love at least it. you know that. It's not bad. <laughs> love Suicide it. Suicide Squad 23 had the first first appearance. We're going to cross examine oh, you. Absolutely, absolutely. But there are a lot of. Was characters the first appearance of what? Oracle. 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 Uh, She's off. First panel. continuity appearance. Oh, it's not the first appearance of Oracle. It's the first continuity appearance of Oracle. What's the first? Ap- what's the first appearance? Of Batman, Oracle? the Killing Joke. But she's not the Oracle. She's oh, the Oracle oh, she's still Barbara she's, Gordon. Yeah, she's still Barbara Gordon. Oh, I'm sorry. You're correct. I apologize. The the, the character, the Oracle, the, the, yeah. the person of yes, the computer. Yes, I, 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 yeah. okay. I, I understand my mistake. Right. I'm gonna leave oh, now. Oh, and I'm yeah, that, that was when she <laughs> she first identified herself yeah. as the Oracle. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you take your stuff and go home? Yeah. yeah well, maybe I will. <laughs> Freaking comic books. <laughs> <laughs> Language. I said freaking. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but the the opening part of that run, and I think Zaz, uh, 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 Bojo. Or, I'm sorry. You can call me Zach. It's yeah. fine. You can call him. <laughs> you can call him Bozaz. Bozaz. <laughs> Bozaz. Bojangles over here. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> he can attest to the fact that in these early issues, um, you just don't know who's coming back. Um, and it's not like the rebooted Suicide Squad, the new 52 Suicide Squad, that a lot of people are. So, so sorry, I, yeah. I, I know I'm going to cut you off, but this is actually a question I'm going to ask. So what is kind of appealing to you mm-hmm. about that? It's kind of like you're kind of hanging by any every word or like every issue because you don't know if like yeah. a regular character will be there next issue. It's exactly. So you, so you develop an affinity for this character with the knowledge that, I mean, if they go, you know, they're n- they're not going to come back. There's not going to be three versions of them coming back. And then, you know, <laughs> Most the likely. Yeah, they're, they're not, the I never thought about moment. it like they're, that. They're, like not, they're, not exactly. they're not important <laughs> enough to bring back. Exactly. You know, they're you know. not important enough. I never thought about it like but that. But it takes a great writer to make them seem important to you. Yeah. The word is stakes. Yeah. They seem like there's actual, like, stakes for the characters, stakes right. for the people. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I get what you're saying because, you know, Batman, Superman issues, you know, you're reading those and it's just like, it, I mean, even Spider-Man, you yeah. throw in there, it's just like, you know you're gonna see them next issue, no matter what yeah. the, yeah. no matter what pickle they get themselves into. Like That's true. he's gonna make it out. <laughs> right. it's, it's more like you're figuring out how are they gonna make it out more than if they're gonna make exactly, it out. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, I mean, and you know when they touted the death of Superman, I, it was a big, you know, it was a big rating. Right. Yeah. Did, did anyone expect? Did, did anyone expect that he would stay dead? No, yes. absolutely not. People who were not reading comics expected oh, that. Yeah, he would stay yeah. Dead. People, but yeah, non-comic fans. I, I remember. Um, there was there was something about it. I think it was one of the PBS specials they did uh-huh. a great um about like comics through the ages, really good special, and they were showing like news video of people, regular people in droves buying the death of Superman, yep. yeah. like on the news, like people like they interviewed some woman. She's like, I've never read comics, I never bought yeah. comics, but like I hear about this death of Superman, it's a big deal, so I'm buying this comic book. Those snaps <laughs> thought the, that book was going to put their kids through college, though. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the the special the series that was uh. Hosted by Lee F. Schreiber. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I so that. good. I think it's on Amazon. It is on Amazon. It is on Amazon. I was Amazon now, but I think it started back. on PBS. It oh, did. It was yeah. on PBS. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Both of those with fact- Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Both <laughs> of those statements are factual. Yeah. yeah. And then Batman had his back broken, so you know. Yeah. There's, there's, Listen, when there's, is he going to come back? You had yeah. Azrael for a bit, but you know, push comes to shove. So, that comes Brucey. So let's get into the nitty gritty here. Yeah. Top three obscure characters right now. My top three obscure characters. Ah, uh, okay. That's. I'm gonna have to think about. It. So there's gonna be some dead air. It's just if anyone wants to sing, hum a few bars. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all number. Let, let's start with your favorite obscure character. Okay, favorite obscure character. See, that's another problem though, because. All right, so so just say one. Okay. No, <laughs> but, but obscure is so subjective, and you. What do you consider you know, obscure? I consider obscure. What I consider obscure is 
Someone that uh, a char- a You can tell a us a character. That, uh, okay. <laughs> Exa- yeah, an example. Okay. Any character. Um, I would think strong guy. No, he's okay. Yeah, he's kind of amazing, strong guy. Like, but you think he's Guido Caracelli? Right? Guido Caracelli. I don't. I don't really think he's mainstream. No. Wait, that, that wasn't no, a joke. No, that's there's what I'm a, saying. There's a character named Strong Guy. There is actually. Yes, there were is. You, oh, were you? Were you kidding? <laughs> he wasn't born when he was, he was created. Oh, that's so, true. You know. But he was important yeah. for a lot of things. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. No. So there is actually a character named Strong oh my Guy. God. Another Peter David creation. He, he named great. himself that. He did. They, did. <laughs> they wanted to, they wanted right. to call him something else in the comic book. Yeah. He was just like, I'm, yeah. I'm strong. strong guy. <laughs> he, 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 That's did funny. he did it satirically. Yeah, oh, 100%. So, yeah. But Ac- it was an X Factor? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you could do so much with a character named Strong Guy because oh, that's that, – yeah, that's, that's <laughs> He's it. so funny. You could do so much with, a char- uh, with that character because it's, there's nothing defining about him except for the fact that he's strong. So it's tabula rasa. You can come up with a great story in – yeah. In, in in the recent run of X Factor, I mean, he went from being like a member of a sleeper cell to the king of hell. So can I say hell? Yes. Okay. We're accepting of all religion. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, so th- you go from just this guy who's and presumed... and people who don't believe in the religion. Right. Yeah, so <laughs> shout out to the atheists out there. <laughs> um, Most comic fans. <laughs> <laughs> Who it's uh Ra? Is that who we? Or who, what's Superman's god? Who's Superman's Rao? Uh, Rao, yeah. Uh, Rao. The only god, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so Peter David was able to take this guy who's one thing is his name, and he can lift things. And the only reason that they came up with a character named Strong Guy was because, and I talked to Larry Stroman about this, <laughs> was because he just wanted to draw a character that looked like the Hulk, but they wouldn't let him use the Hulk. <laughs> So he, he looks nothing like the Hulk. I mean, he's hulking. That's, you know, he's, he's, he's like upper very, body Hulk. He's very large. Um, he, he correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. He he converts kinetic energy into like body like muscle mass. Yes, yes. So he absorbs he absorbs impact and then and the can defi- use that like Peter David had a, a great like a great way of of adding nuance to each of his characters in, in right. X Factor. He was constantly in pain, right? Yes, he was. Yeah. But he was also he was. a jokester. Right. That's why he joked around to yep. mask it. Um, but like I said, a lot of a lot's done with that character. And if you ever get the chance to read the run, oh, I'm reading it. Oh, you are suffering through it. Did you're you? you're reading <laughs> the you're reading the Did wrong you? run. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm reading the one he's talking about. The stuff that you're all no, talking, is, about, I'm talking about. The first one. Yes. Well, but did you read the Did you read the psychic, uh, the the Doc Samson issue where he's Kind of psychoanalyzed. That, that was I I, that's one of the most recent ones. I think I'm like maybe two or three okay. issues past that. Okay, it was all right. But they they give you a lot about the character internally. I mean that you don't really get, and you're not gonna get. I don't think you're really gonna get that much. Listen, it's it's just it's probably something that, based on the fan I am, where okay. it's just not gonna be overly appealing to me. Right. I right. enjoy. Listen, I'm 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 jumping on for to X Men. For for the heavy hitters, right, right. You know, Absolutely. there's. I, I mean, every once in a while, there'll be a new character that I'll be interested in. I just that whole group together. There's some people I like, and Strong Guy is actually one of the characters I do like out of that. Oh, okay. To be honest mm-hmm. with you, but the rest of them are just like, ugh, like Polaris annoys me. Wolfsbane is intolerable. Oh, she, <laughs> she becomes a lot harder to deal with in the second. Oh in the second gosh, <laughs> so she doesn't. So, so I I hated her in New Mutants. Okay. Then yeah, she gets yeah, worse. Yeah. Then she's been. Even worse than this, and you're telling me she's gonna get well, be, worse think, than that. She's pretty religious, but she becomes uber religious, I think. In, in, in all right, the, the oh God. All, yeah, right. So. all right. So let's go into like, so we got strong guy out there. We finally, yes. we finally put a name to an obscure character. Yes. Thank you, because we're doing an obscure character episode, that's, and sorry. that's the first I think name. Strong you've guy given. is the perfect example. Yes, I, I do, but I there's, there's got to be other obscure characters. I mean, you're a big fan of a lot of image characters, are you? I not? am. I am. Oh uh, no. Well, the image characters, uh, they, they're so simplistic. That they're so simplistic that they're almost carbon copies of other characters. You mean? I'm not. Gonna, <laughs> look, I'm not gonna. Yeah, Warwolf looks exactly like Roman, the, like saber tooth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can we Roman? I mean, I know that we all often joke. We're about biting into my Roman, questions for the game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But the '90s came with a very the sensibility for the '90s was you know more is better. Um, and uh, those images evident by anybody who who's read ninety stuff. It's yeah, just no, yeah. it's light on more muscle, Volume, more right? Right. more you know pouches, more guns, bigger guns. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, 
just you're right excessive like, like, like it, it, much like the 90s were yeah yeah, yeah. and it, it, it it's excess but i mean it's so over the top that it's fun and i think that's <laughs> where it draws you to those so characters. you embrace that you know, i do i do i know a lot of people malign it but i mean if you if you look past the shoddy writing and if you look past you know the carbon copy characters you know, it's, it's, it's if you look past read. if you look past the fact that it's not written well, the characters aren't drawn well. They're carbon <laughs> copies of much better characters. It's fun. <laughs> that's what I'm getting from you. That, All right. I, I, so if that doesn't sell you on reading these books, I don't know what will. <laughs> I think that's a very succinct explanation, but I can't, I can't deny that that's exactly L- what I said. Listen, you, uh, l- listen. I'm going to be honest with you. Within our group, there's at least another three people. Who are into right. this stuff? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Hello. Uh, yeah, there's <laughs> one here. Uh, we know we know another former guest, Tom Travers. Yes. Uh, another uh, probably future guest, Ozzy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Nick. You know, Nick. Oh, Nick. Nick. oh, oh yeah, I wasn't man. even counting him. But Nick you know, the best the comics. Man. There's yeah. you know you got to remember too, like we're from that era. Yeah. Too, so we're always gonna have a connection. I know, like kind of my favorite '90s um, character. Is another Peter David creation, which is Spidey twenty ninety nine, and oh, obviously it's Spidey. And it's really before I got into Peter Parker. So I actually, my first introduction was probably more Spidey twenty ninety nine mm-hmm. than it was Miguel, 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 Miguel O'Hara. Right? Miguel what O'Hara. What a name, man! I have, yeah. ha- have both his uh, <laughs> have both his oh. first appearance. Yeah, I was so I was telling Steph about this yeah. the other day because there's an annou- there was also an announcement about something happening with the character Spidey twenty ninety nine. I don't know exactly what it is if it's going to be animation or something like that. Mm-hmm. But there's an announcement at SDCC. I, I should have wrote it down. Shame on me, but. Um, I was like, yeah, well, there's this character. He's in the future, and it's a, he's in New Ever York, and his name is Miguel O'Hara. And she just looks at me and rolls her eyes. It's just like, all right, so I'll stop talking about this. But <laughs> <laughs> she's like, but so it's Spider-Man in the future. So Tom Holland's gonna be in this. I was like, never, uh. never mind. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, I mean, I I think he's he's probably more he's probably ca- getting a little bit more mainstream he, love now. But he was he kind is. of I feel like. But no, for me, he was a kind of I would agree. obscure character. I would agree. He's obscure in the, in the sense that he's never going to step out of Peter Parker's shadow. No, never. I mean, that's no no one is. Right. I mean, I, I know Ma- they're trying to get Miles to yeah. because of the size. They, they tried interview. with Miles. They but, tried um, with Silk. I mean, they tried with a lot of characters. Yeah. I mean, it's just – it's very hard, and the world is very resistant to change. And maybe in 50 years, Miles will be the big character. Right. But I just – I don't see it. Like, I'm always the original. I was like right. – like, you know, imitation is the best form of flattery, but right. that's all it is, is imitation. You know, you have Miles, you have Silk, you have Spider Gwen, right. you know, you have Spidey twenty nine nine, which is awesome, but it's just not it's not Spider Man. None of it would exist without Spider Man. Exactly. Well why did you start reading Miles? Or not Miles, excuse me, why did you start reading Miguel then? What what what, what? So it was when I was a kid, I think it was one of the few books that I, I might have actually had the the uh Spidey twenty nine nine number one. And it had out? a cool cover. Like maybe ninety four. I wasn't born yet. Ninety two or ninety two, ninety four. It could have been ninety two. Honestly, I hate you. And he just had a his costume was cool. Yeah. Um, And like when I was a kid, like you know, I knew the characters, but I didn't you know know them outside of whatever like cartoon or media that we got. Right. Right. So you know, it's the whatever the cover. Like that's why that you know that what if number fifty? It's like Wolverine's bones and silver like embossed on the cover or embossed or however that word (laughs) is pronounced. Um, and then, you know, like I had a what if, um, uh, coincidentally enough, qu- what if um, Spider-Man kept his cosmic powers? It was just a cool cover of him in this <laughs> costume I had never seen oh, before. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was just like, it was it was stuff like that. And I mean, you know, I also had like the Death of Superman trade and, you mm-hmm. know, like that I, I didn't have the original issue as a kid. But um, it was like kind of big arcs or, you know, when you're a little kid and you see something, oh, that looks cool. Like, right. you're, not, you're not looking like, oh, I wonder if this is the first appearance. <laughs> right, right. But I mean, so like, do you stick with obscure characters now? Um, I, I, they're definitely a lot. The thing is, the, the 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 pool of characters that are obscure, I think, is getting slimmer because all the cinematic universe, the Netflix universe, it's taking these characters that people were not necessarily the f- fans putting of them in the forefront. And, yeah, exactly, kind of pushing them into the forefront. Red Guardian is going to be in Black Widow. Red Guardian in a movie. I mean, this guy only I think has only appeared in two comic books ever. Right. Yeah, and that that yeah. that's obscure. That's absolutely. I mean, ha- obscure, I mean, just look know? at Hawkeye. I I mean, Hawkeye was like a poor man's Green Arrow. Oh, that's really. And yeah. I know you're a big fan of his, but I mean, just before this, this movie, guy down. 
this is. Well, I mean, it, I mean, but you're also a Green Arrow fan too. But I am a Green between Arrow the two, fan. you're more of a Hawkeye guy, yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and and I can see that he does have a cool appeal. I mean, his costume, like, I mean, his costume just screams. I, I know it's like, a, is it a '60s costume, the purple? Yeah. But like, yeah. like I feel like they just embellished upon that, like everything else in the '90s, oh, yeah, and it yeah. just got better and purpler. That's, <laughs> that, that's purpler. <laughs> that's not even his worst costume. Oh, <laughs> Uh, jeez. But yeah, I, I would I would consider um, up until recently, uh, Hawkeye was an obscure character. No one cared about him. He couldn't carry a series for the life of him. Yeah. Um, and I loved him because I was reading I was reading Steve Englehart and Al Milgram's West Coast Avengers. Like I read them before I read the regular Avengers. So, he, he was the leader. He and he was kind of a jerk too, right? He was. He was also. Yeah. He was also. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't like this. You know, kind of heroic, uh, like heroic, likable character all the time. Mm-hmm. He was kind of, you know, a jerk, and uh, it, it came through. But it was more interesting because you can, you're not always going to be the, you know, for the greater good, Captain America. Yeah, I mean, the the cookie cutter, like the the great superheroes, are great in the concept and they inspire people, but they're not always great reads. No, like Captain America, like Captain America, if he has a great story arc, he's really good. But then. Captain America gets boring after a while. Superman. I'm a Superman guy. Yeah. I was like, how, after, how good can a good person really be? <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. Like, you know, anytime like they want to shake that book up, like, oh, that's randomly evil Captain America, evil <laughs> Superman, and eventually gets so <laughs> much harder. Captain to America, Hail Hydra. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like with yeah. those characters who have like such flawed and weird backgrounds, mm-hmm. it's so much more fun. Like, just right. think about like, you know, why is Batman so interesting? Because like Batman, if you think about it, too, is kind of a jerk also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, <laughs> like, whoa, 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 whoa. He's definitely, definitely a jerk. A jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that coming a mile away. <laughs> oh man! Uh. Yeah, yeah, that that's I would, I, that's a great point about Batman, actually, because you know he he Cyclops he, the same thing, even though he's a more mainstream mm, character. Yeah. Like he's always like he's trying to be the cookie cutter guy, but he's just he like he's just guy. so bad. Yeah, I don't yeah. like him. He's a jerk. <laughs> he's I, a jerk. I, I like that he's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, Havoc can like Havoc is not that great a guy either. Like, no. Havoc's kind of a jerk also. He's got a bad. He's got a bad. You know, yeah. the only heroic figure to look up to. The only fun member of that family is a uh, Corsair. Yo, abs- guy, Corsair is okay. Great. Cool. Oh yeah, I brought. That's right. I brought up the Star Jammers. <laughs> Corsair. Speaking is of obscure characters, of Alex and uh, Alex Scott, Scott and Vulcan. Vulcan. Yes. Was he Vulcan Vulcan's well. dad? Yeah. No, oh wait, he might not. No, he wasn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good catch. Yeah. I see. I, I didn't remember. I do know that Vulcan is going to be appearing in the new Hickman X Men series. Yeah, <laughs> really? I did. I did read that. All the summers are in it. So how is wait? How's he a Summers then? Uh, mom. mom. His mom. His mom. His so, mom is also a Summers. No. So the mother and father are Summers. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Cyclops is messed up. <laughs> he really only has that, one that, eye. That that, that is fault. Fo- that's <laughs> now we know we're the mutant gene king. <laughs> Oh my God! What are we doing? <laughs> oh, this episode is a bad idea. I hope <laughs> I'm hoping this stays in. So I'm hoping this stays in. I want to actually touch on um, what you were saying before about yeah, right. uh, you know smaller series, lesser known characters. Uh, comic creators are given more kind of leeway to do yes. what they want. You mentioned Hawkeye. Hawkeye was one of the the characters that jumped in on Thunderbolts, and mm-hmm. I know you're mm-hmm. you're a Thunderbolts I guy. Am a Thunderbolts guy. Like Thunderbolts was a series that started in ninety six, ninety seven. Ninety seven, I think. 97, Kurt Busiek took the Masters of Evil, had them put on new personas, and pretend to be heroes. Mm-hmm. And they actually wound up being, being heroic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, Hawkeye came in. and But, like, that's a that's a, a mine. That, 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 what did they, did they wind up doing, like, 180 issues yeah. of Thunderbolts? Yeah. I, I think it, it, it got continuity got weird, though, because yeah, became intergalactic wrestlers for a bit. Yeah, that was weird. Which was, it still appealed to me, <laughs> but it wasn't, really, it wasn't really the book I signed up for. <laughs> uh, Jeff, I love you. <laughs> But like that's like a treasure, like treasure trove of, yeah. of like lesser known characters. It's one of those books that like probably has a consistent like selling base, like sells a certain number Me. of copies every yeah. single month. Yeah. And then like the, the writer just kind of gets to go hog wild with the yeah. characters that they, they have. So like, what other books are you reading that are, are like the original Thunderbolts or like the Jeff Parker Thunderbolts? Like, wh- where do you, what other books do you think are like good treasure troves of of, of well, unknown characters? I'm gonna come. Uh, can I come back to that? Yeah. Um, actually, I, but have you guys have you guys read the Kirkman Manifesto? Um, it's when Robert Kirkman became a, a partner at Image. No. So he left. He actually, I mean, publicly proclaimed that you know, uh, comic book creators should stop doing uh, work for hire 
for the big two. Like I did see on, that. Yeah, work on creator own projects. Um, you know, you know, leave the safety net of the big two, and you know, if you're good, you're gonna survive because like you have that creative outlet now without the editorial mandate. I think working on these obscure characters is a way for these creators to kind of remain under the umbrella of you know the the big publishers. But still have creative control. Exactly. Exactly. Who's gonna, yeah, that's who's a good point. gonna care if you know you take Iron Fist and like instead of you know him being you know a street level a street level hero, you send you know, him to space. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or you emphasize you know the 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 the, 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 the mystical heavenly city. kingdoms. Yeah, yeah. The, the mystical cities. Start emphasizing the martial arts aspect of it. Start em- like make it like Mortal Kombat in comic form, which was yeah. one of the only Iron Fist series that I really enjoyed. Because <laughs> <laughs> they went, yeah. they went so good. They yeah. went away from what Iron Fist was, and 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 it was basically a Jean Claude Van Damme movie. It, <laughs> three it, was, it, Van it was the Damme quest. <laughs> it was. It could have been Bloodsport, and it could have been Kickboxer. <laughs> Those are the same. Just, <laughs> just slap a new coat of paint on it. It's the same thing. You're, you're talking about Brubaker and Fraction yeah, and uh, Bru- uh, yeah. Immortal Iron Fist. Immortal Iron yeah. Fist. Fantastic. Uh, a great great series. I think a seminal run. Yes. Um, because what, what did Iron Fist have going for him before that? But Jay Lee did the art on him? I mean, well, he was really nothing. So He had a, a three-issue miniseries that came out probably 10 years prior to that. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, that's the, the 90s one with Wolverine? Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. There was the Iron Fist and Wolverine miniseries, yeah. and I feel like there was another three-issue miniseries uh, right around know. the same time, but I don't, I don't, I don't recall I the name of it. Yeah, uh, it's probably not. But you'd probably love it. There's probably three or four random characters that right. you're going to fall in love with. Oh, I will give it a try. <laughs> I will give it a try. Um, but there's, you know, you can do you can do a lot. Um, you can you can make the characters comedic. You can make them serious. You know, you can make them satirical. Um you can, you can, you know, you can comment on, you can comment on, you know, contemporary politics in these books because no one really reads these characters, <laughs> so you're not risking. Hey, anything. you do. <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> I All do. Right. So let's kind of get back okay. to his question real yeah, quick because right. we want to do the game in like a minute. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't, don't apologize. <laughs> no. You're no. our guest. <laughs> I'm like talking about Iron Fist too long. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's no so, so were you basically <laughs> asking him like what he would re- recommend and what's obscure? Not now even just that. Like where 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 would you find like uh, what are what are good titles that that uh, you like that you feel like the creator has creative freedom on and it's just like a it. treasure trove of of like uh, lesser known characters of obscurity. That's an awesome question. <laughs> um. My number one recommendation would be uh, Warren Ellis' uh, Warren Ellis and Stuart Eminem's <laughs> Next Wave Agents of Hate. I think that is one of the most, and it's got a cult following. It's people that love that book. <laughs> that book is so good. <laughs> it's hilarious. I don't know if you guys has anyone. What, here, what's the title? Face he has so not. Many blank stares at this table. What, right what's now. the title, Jeff? <laughs> it's uh, Next Wave Agents of Hate. So, so there, and, this is and legitimately, and I, I can't believe I'm saying this twice in one episode. And what company is this being produced by? This is Marvel Comics. Okay. This is Marvel. The, the team. <laughs> talk, talk about the, the, the team members because they're all known ish. No, they, they're not. They're all known ish. The, the, I can't believe I'm saying this twice in one episode. These are pirate superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> they work for this organization, Hate, which is a very thinly like veiled Analog version of, 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 Shield. of Shield. With Dirk Anger. Dirk Anger. <laughs> Dirk Anger leading the, uh, leading is, the charge. Is their leader. They run off essentially with like Dirk a mini. <laughs> <laughs> not Nick Fury. Dirk, Dirk Anger. Dirk Anger. It's it on is, Marvel Unlimited. It is fantastic. Oh, you you read should that book. absolutely read it. Read that book. Um, That's an amazing book. And so it's th- they're essentially like pirate superheroes. They run around. They stole a ship from hate. They run around and like fight things here and there and like superhero, but like you know swashbucklingly. Right. They're fighting a corporate conglomerate. So. <laughs> <laughs> so a little stolen from Guardians of the Galaxy or vice versa. It's or, vice versa. Yeah. This a, came a out little before. Star Jammers. So yeah. This book came out. There's a <laughs> there's an issue of the series. I think it's number seven, like when Civil War was out. So this oh, was this is actually one of the later ones. Was is this? that the one with the cover where they're all holding? They're the all signs? holding signs. Yeah. It's it's made to look like it's Civil War time, yeah, but, but it's, it's not. not. Mark Miller looks goats. <laughs> yeah, prominently written all the signs. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> so the the, the cast of characters is um, you have Monica Rambeau. Yes. Who is Going currently to not going to be uh, an obscure character. Yes. Um, so she's she's Photon, and her, her common catch line in that entire series is, well, when I was on the Avengers. When I was on the Avengers. <laughs> uh, there's the, the captain. The captain. Who? Well, it, w- it, it, was a, it was Captain Expletive. Um, <laughs> it was his original name, but Captain America actually 
he introduced himself to Captain America by that name, and Captain America beat him up so badly and then put a bar of soap in his mouth that he had to change his name to the Captain. The, the running awesome. joke with the Captain is he's been the cap Captain whatever that shows up randomly in any of the like, Marvel issues. Yeah. He has been all of them. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Elsa Bloodstone. Elsa Bloodstone is in it. The uh, Marvel, I think the Marvel kind of analog to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, from the Bloodstone family, who is also very obscure. Oh boom, boom, from the New Mutants. Oh yes, yes, and they really and played her Adirondack past. I guess I'll call it. <laughs> trying to be, uh, trying to be a little. Uh, is this the whole team? Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> Machine Man. Machine Man is on the team. Too. Machine Man calls all of the the humans fleshy ones. We're, we're, yes. we're gonna have to do a part two of it, <laughs> and you're gonna have to come prepared with names. <laughs> Because <laughs> um, I think we're gonna jump into our our game now. Because this this will go on forever. If we don't let it. <laughs> this, is, this is this is terrifying. Um, so the game we're gonna play. Okay. And I don't and I don't think I told you this. So you're gonna play against Matt. Oh boy. It's called athlete or comic character. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> we're the perfect ones for this. Oh my God. We don't know sports at all. <laughs> I'm just going to assume anyone with a litter of names is a superhero. All right. So, unfortunately, due to our conversations, this one is going to be a little bit of a softball to okay. you. Uh, so, we're going to start with Jeff because you are our quote unquote guest. <laughs> what are we playing to? Um, so, if someone would please keep the tally, DM's I, got I it. think I have 30 questions. Okay. Oh, my goodness. And oh, um, they're, they're, there's only one answer it's either athlete or comic character. Okay. And you either get it right or you don't. Okay. <laughs> That's generally how questions work. All right. <laughs> Let's go all the way through. Let's see. Yeah, no, we're, go we're going to. Because <laughs> it's going to be pretty quick. I'm excited about this. All right. Jeffrey, we're starting with you. Hit me. Guido Carousella. <laughs> oh, man. Athlete or comic character? I was, I was going to be a smart Alec, uh, right. but it's, he's a hero. He's a yes, hero. comic so. character. Correct. Yes. I want I want, I to get the early lead. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mr. Toy Story, your question. Sorry, not question. Roy Roman, athlete or comic character? Athlete. Incorrect. He is Roman. His first name is Roy? Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> His first name is Roy. Jeff oh just said God. if it's alliterative, it's a comic <laughs> character. <laughs> All right, Jeff, you're, qu you're one. Uh, Mia Hamm. Oh, wait, no. She's, like, famous. Uh Athlete or comic character? She's, a, she's an athlete, right? Because that is also correct. Okay. Just crushing player. me. Right. Yes. I, 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 you know, you, I thought you didn't know sports, man. <laughs> it, it was a sport. <laughs> she I, did a got milk commercial. These that are, was like at the these, back are of a these are going from easy to hard. Okay, just so you know. That these, was easy. These are the easy ones. Yes. <laughs> Toy Story. Roger Rodney Rabbit. Mm. Athlete or comic character? An athlete. Athlete? Yeah. Is that your question? Yeah. Uh, you're incorrect. Oh That's God. Captain Carrot. <laughs> Captain. <laughs> Funny enough, I did not know his name was Roger Rabbit. <laughs> I thought it was just Roger oh Rabbit. Oh, my God. Uh, all right. Jeff. Albert Francis Simmons. Athlete or comic hmm. character? Oh, uh, Al Simmons at Spawn. So, comic character. Correct. Ooh. Getting crushed, Toy Story. As usual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's still plenty of game left. All right, Toy Story. Lorna Dane. Comic character. Polaris. Correct. That's Polaris. Polaris. All right, Jeff. Alex Morgan. I don't even know if that's a dude or a woman. Um, <laughs> I'm not, t I'm no, not wait, telling wait, wait, wait. you. Wait, wait, wait. I, no, I do know her because. No, that's, that's, a, that's an athlete. She's a soccer player. That's correct. Dude, says, when do you know soccer, man? <laughs> she's, she's, she's really attractive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to like cover the mic. You can say that. All right. All right, let's go. Let's Matt, go. your question, uh, your character. Yeah. Sue Bird, comic character or athlete? Comic character. Incorrect. She's okay. a WNBA basketball player. Also went to Christ the King High School in Queens. Oh. She's uh, from Long Island, I believe. Shout, uh, out. Shout out to Susan Bird. All right. So, Matt, it, it's currently 4-1 to one as I see the tally here. I hope you have yep. an epic comeback. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I won't. This <laughs> It's not going to happen. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jeff, Tabitha Smith. Tabitha Smith. Oh, no. That's, uh, that's a comic character. You're right. It's Boom Boom. Yeah, I boom, knew boom, it. Boom, boom, I was like, why do you have to bring her up earlier? <laughs> I didn't mention her name. All right. 
Matt Chad Ocho Cinco. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a character or athlete? <laughs> athlete. You're correct. He's an NFL <laughs> <player. laughs> He changed and his name. By to your Ocho expression, Cinco. that was a complete guess. <laughs> he did change his name. To Ocho Cinco. It was it's, Chad Johnson before? Oh, I think so. Yeah, his number was 85. Yeah. It's not even the correct. 88, like, I think, right? Ocho yeah. Cinco? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not even it's the not correct. even the correct way to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jeff, Horace Grant. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, he's an athlete. You're correct. Dude, what the hell, he man? He goggles. <laughs> NBA, <laughs> NBA player. I love All right, this. Matt, this yours. Is so good. Let's go. Coco Crisp. Athlete or comic character? Athlete. Correct. That's Ooh. not a cereal. He's that was a, so ridiculous. I was going to say, athlete. it sounds like a cereal yeah, to me. He's a baseball <laughs> player. That's Cookie, cookie Crisp. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff. Yep. Mitchell Mayo. Um, it's got the alliteration in it, but I'm going to go with athlete. Incorrect. Who is that, Jeff? I mean, who is that, uh, Bojo? W- uh, say the name again. Mitchell, Mitchell Mayo? I don't know. That's the condiment king. Son of a Oh, oh my God. No. <laughs> I should have I thought I recognized that, that name because he was in the, in the Harley Quinn <laughs> series that That's I read. Funny. All right. Uh, Toy Story. Howie Long. Comic guy. Oh, Are you no. kidding me, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's an NFL player. <laughs> Can I just say it's not fair that you're emasculating us during a comic book? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, this is this is to know. You should know the comic book character so well that you would know the name wasn't a comic book <laughs> That's character. A okay. All right. Okay. The counterpoint is it, counterpoint in Toy Story's defense, who's named Howie? <laughs> <laughs> the duck. <laughs> Howie uh, Mandel. Oh uh, yeah. All right, <laughs> your your character is Frederick Myers. Oh, that's a comic character. You're right. It's Boomerang. Cap- yeah. It's Captain Boomerang, Boomerang. which is tricky because he's a baseball player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, points for either? <laughs> What's that? I no, you wouldn't. Nope. <laughs> it's, it's not Captain Boomerang. It's just Boomerang. Uh, it's a Captain yeah, Boomerang. Yeah, no, it is early. Boomerang because they call him. It's, yeah, it's, 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 he's Fred in, in Superior uh, Boys. Yeah. Um, he's, he's just Boomerang? Yeah. Um, what's his name? It's, it's Spider Man's roommate. Digger. Yeah, uh, I know. Who Digger is. Harkness is, is the okay. Captain Cap- Boomerang. Cap- yeah. All right. Digger I could be mistaken. I apologize. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, I was right that Fist he was bump. a comic book character. Yes, that is correct. All right, Matt. Come on, Doreen Green. Sorry, repeat. Doreen Green. Comic character. Correct. It's Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl. Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. Yeah. Who is? <laughs> no, no, no. We're not going into that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Treasure trove of obscure characters. I was, gonna, I was actually going to throw that title out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're going to have to give me a second for this one, Jeff. Martina Navratilova. Athlete or comic oh character? She is. Well, I know this one. She's an athlete. Correct. She's a tennis player. Hmm. All right, Toy Story. <laughs> Thomas Reese Blake. Comic character. Catman. Correct. Catman, of course yeah. you knew that. <laughs> All right. Ooh, it's eight Secret to five, six. Jeff. All right, coming Toy back. Toy Story, code Secret up. Six. Yeah, Secret Six. I mean, hey. Yeah. Chen <laughs> Lu. What? Chen Lu. Chen Lu. Oh, Chen Lu. That's easy. What's a Is comic it? character? You're right. It's radioactive, man. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Thunderbolts. Thunderbolts, nice. baby. <laughs> All right. Toy Story. Mookie Blaylock. Uh, athlete. Yes, he's an NBA player. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jeff. Just Maxine look. Manchester. <laughs> His face. That's. I'm going to go with a comic character. Lady Tron. From Wildstorm, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. That's good. Um, Matt, Carrie Kittles. Comic character. He was an NBA player for the Nets he- for a very long time. I, you know, that would have. I, I feel like that would have gotten both of you. All right, your character is Bill Quackenbush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Rodrigo Ricardo character. I'm sorry, it's incorrect. He was an NHL player. <laughs> from like the 50s? From the 50s. Oh, good that guy. I know. I hope he lived a long life. Yeah. Um, oh, my goodness. It's a long life. It's a great legacy to leave behind. Toy Story. Ziggy Hood. Athlete. Correct. NFL player. Jeff. Dan Cassidy. That is... That's a comic book character. It's the Blue Devil. Currently being played nice. by Ian Ziering on Swamp Thing. <laughs> nice. I think it's Ein. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, that Ziering guy. <laughs> Toy Story. Yeah. Catfish Hunter. Catfish Hunter. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> Athlete. Correct. MLB player. <laughs> I think he has a record for most wins. <laughs> Pitch, he was an M- MLB pitcher. Yep. I was thinking grumpy old men. <laughs> also, been, also, also yes. You've got to be an alpha male. Okay. You that point? <laughs> yeah, I gave yeah. you the point. <laughs> um, Jeff, Jim Harper. Oh, uh, that's, a, that's an athlete. Incorrect. Ooh. It's a guardian. Oh. <laughs> All right. Billy Moon. Comic. Correct. Skate Man, created by Neil Adams. Skate Man. <laughs> it's an obscure character for oh, you. That is not one, that's not a rabbit hole I plan on going down. <laughs> Bjorn Borg. Oh, that guy's an athlete. That's correct. <laughs> I should have gotten a harder one. Uh, His name was Bjorn. So. Susan Kent. Comic character. Bullet Girl, correct. Oh. Hey. <laughs> nice. All right, that's so the end. Tally here. That's oh, it. Toy Story made a really valiant okay. comeback. <laughs> Final score was Jeff twelve, Toy Story ten. Right, well, right. showing guys. So I just want to let you know that I did an even amount. So there was fifteen comic characters and fifteen okay. uh, <laughs> athletes, and I also try to pick two from each sport. I refuse to believe that Catfish Hunter is a person. He w- <laughs> it I, was I, so I, ridiculous. I, I believe, I be believe Catfish was his nickname, but everyone called him Catfish okay, Hunter. Okay, That's yeah. great. Like you would not, <laughs> you probably would have known him sure. less from his actual name. You probably would have thought the, the real name was actually a comic book character. So I probably helped you with the Catfish Hunter part. <laughs> but uh, that was fun. Uh, that was do, interesting. Do you guys want to uh, want to save oh, watching and and reading for next time? Yeah, let's hold that off. I need to read a little uh, we, We've gotten to about two hours here today. Hey. Uh, this was fun, though. Thanks, yeah. Jeff. I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think we got abs- as obscure as we wanted to, and we apologize. We for didn't all the... talk about Snow Flame. I was. I, I was going to mention him, but he, he's, he's only in one comic. It yeah. doesn't matter, my yeah. friend. Next time, part Snow two. Flame. Greatness, regardless. I feel like we need to have a Snow Flame have, episode. You have artwork from Tom Travers. Yeah, it's Snow Flame. I think it should be a Christmas episode, yeah. honestly, yeah. that we have. <laughs> <laughs> it's the time of you know winter and snow, so <laughs> that's not a better time to dive into Snow. <laughs> uh, let let us get our reader sh- uh, our listenership up before we bring it down with Snowflake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we're gonna close it out here. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to rush through um, reading and watching. Hmm. So um, let's just close out. Uh, do we have anything quickly to announce? I don't think so. Trevor Con's uh, in a few weeks. We might have some announcements coming on social media that you'll see soon, but yes. they're not quite ready yet. We're finally doing that uh, the thing with that book we were talking about. The book, book club, club. Yeah. correct. Uh, we didn't make that announcement. Uh, we're the long Halloween. We'll, we, we will be ready to go rocking and rolling for that on, I believe it's August 23rd, we said. Cool. Yep. It's going to be live. We're going to eventually test that to make sure the live works for sure. <laughs> but, um, yeah. To be determined. So, so yeah, we hope uh, everyone joins for that. We will have more episodes. Uh, we have a very exciting episode coming soon, uh, too. Set up right. We haven't had the interviews yet, but this yeah. wasn't an exciting episode. Two. Uh, I'm <laughs> saying additional <laughs> exciting. <laughs> episodes. Oh yeah. To that promise. I mean, I think the the stuff about San Diego Comic Con is really exciting. Oh, uh, uh, riveted. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> riveted. Uh, and yeah. the news is only starting because there's going to be more news coming up. Yeah. That's yeah. I think we're going to have we're going to have more so. stuff coming out. Um, but yeah, again, good stuff coming. Yeah, uh, so continue to check out the social media, uh, Long Island Comic Guys, uh, at everything, right? At L- everything. LI Comic Guys. Yeah. Uh, our website is up and running. It looks great. You can uh, listen to all the episodes we've released so far there, as, as well as on any um, you know listening platforms like iTunes, uh, 
Spotify, Google, Google, Play, Google Play, all that, all, all that good stuff. But uh, definitely check out our website. Uh, we have some guys on hand here. Our our tech wizards, Mr. JJ and Toy Story, did a hell of a lot of great work on that, and uh, we're giving them a little clap there for that. Thank you guys for all the hard work you put into there. Um, there's some uh, artwork that uh, Mr. Bojo has been working on that you will see soon, <laughs> and uh, thank you again to him for all that. But you guys will be sharing all that with you and more. Um, so make sure to follow us, like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff because it helps us. And by helping us, we get to bring you more content. And you know what? Also, um, we forgot to say this last time, but reach out. Uh, if there's stuff you want us to talk about, uh, stuff you want to know more about, let us know. We can either talk about it on an episode or, you know, if you want to reach out to us directly and we'll answer your questions for you. Um, if we don't have the knowledge, we have plenty of friends who know so much stuff. So, you know, we our main goal of doing this is to really share information with everyone. And uh, get more comic <laughs> fans out there. So tell your friends about us. Well said. Yeah. All right. Great. So Very good. is this one we're going to say until next time? Don't be the geeks! <laughs>